Well, hello everybody and welcome to the 357th edition of the Boxing Asylum Nutters podcast. I'm your host Steve Wellings and joining me on the call we have Andy Patterson, Ozzy Smith and Dave the Hater Lobach. Glad you could join us everybody, vibrant chat already getting sorted there. We are here live on Mixler.com forward slash Boxing Asylum from 8pm on Sundays. The Patreon RSS feed shortly after the show concludes. And Mondays on YouTube, SoundCloud and iTunes. Welcome if you're listening on any of those platforms. And we don't ask very often... But don't forget to rate and review the podcast wherever you find it. Let the providers know that you love the asylum and you want to hear from us every week. This week you'll be hearing us talking about Danny Garcia very shortly, previewing the action for next week. Comments, questions, tons of value of the week. Stick with us for the duration, the duration even, of the show, why don't you? Good evening to all of our new listeners out there, a few new names in the chat box. One of whom may be purveyor of woke content himself, Matthew J. Hunter. This may be the one and only time Matthew tunes in. <laughs> so welcome to you. I don't know if he's going to join us, Andy, or not. The chances are probably thin. And if he comes this week, he probably won't be back next week. Well, he's, he's been shitting on the lads for the boxing rant, Vinny and Kenny and all the boys and that. So uh, if he's if he's expecting something different for us, he's fucking sadly mistaken. <laughs> well, we might as well start with you. We're not going to be shitting on Danny Swift Garcia. Maybe we will be. I mean, sorry to descend back into Why British Why the hell Berkeley. not? <laughs> exactly, Dave. Uh, Andy, sorry to descend back into British hair clinic territory, but that red catch mop, what on earth was he thinking? Is he looking to get out a job as a lollipop man or something? Oh man, if he'd been black, he'd look like a paint of Guinness, wouldn't he? Let's <laughs> uh, see. Uh, i enough to get Matthew off the call. <laughs> <laughs> he, he bought he bought red catch, but nothing to the table. <laughs> Apart from a, st- a South Pole stance, a bit of casual racism in the past, and a bit of power. Other than that, and his Miguel Cotto tattoo. I mean, come on. They're preparing for Spence. What on earth was this guy doing? Well, he wasn't throwing punches anyway. I'm glad you mentioned Spence. Uh, I'm just going to throw in Pacquiao. If this is some sort of tune-up fight for likes of either of these two, no, okay, we don't know where Spence is at, so it might, it might be a blessing in disguise after all. But Pacquiao, even at this point, what is he, 40, 41, doesn't really matter and stuff like that. But at this point, to me... I think Danny Garcia is merely a gatekeeper at, wel- at welterweight. I mean, he couldn't even put away this bum that John Molina stopped. Now, I know John Molina was a big power p- big power hitter when he wanted to be and stuff like that, but that, to me, confirmed um, that he's a gatekeeper. You know, it's just a, a, it's been a poor, poor start to the to the year for, for Showtime as well. Nothing but mismatches. You know, let me just kind of segue slightly into Hurd as well and that, because these two were like obviously the two top names in the card and none of them delivered. Both of them shit the bed. It was like even the the announcement got read out of the Garcia fight. The place was almost empty, and uh, he's he's now on there complaining about like so I have to lose twenty five pounds, uh, blaming the weight and all that. Like, look, you are not fighting often enough, and when you do fight, you are fighting you are fighting trash, right? So just lay off the excuses. You know what you've got to do. Stay in the gym and stay off whatever you are doing. Up putting your, your shitty videos on on Twitter or Instagram and stuff, and just get in the gym. Be who you who you are. I meant to be a fighter. Um, see, I just I, I didn't want to go in two balls deep and stuff like that. I just come across as an absolute hater. But you know, come on, you got to do better than that. Absolutely got to do better than that. I mean, I, I don't know if he got paid six figures for that fight there last night, but if he did, he got paid six figures too much because it's um, it, it's like they're getting paid too much far too soon. Okay, maybe he's he's been in a lot of big fights. He's earned some good money and stuff like that. But I don't think the hunger's there anymore. In, in all honesty. You know, it's clearly that the you know, fight like say, Aiden Granados, you know, after coming off like say the Porter fight, but he's six, eight months out of the ring before he fights Granados, and even then, he's out of the ring for the best part of a year before he fights Redcatch. So what is he doing? He's he's no injured, right? He's just claimed that he's just staying in the gym, so he's been out there, he's been out of the ring there for like the last ten months, nine, ten months, whatever it is, before he fought Redcatch and stuff like. That. He's just no, he's just no loving life. He's interested in other things, being the businessman. Being, um, you know, the guy on Instagram and all that sort of stuff with the, with the, with the pictures and stuff. Uh, to me, if he fights Pacquiao, he's he's in for a bad, bad night. I'm not going to say he's going to take a bad beating because he will always have a chance with the left hook. But that that guy's going to give you different angles. He's going to throw loads of shots at you stuff like Garcia's just kind of like, he was like plodding, jab right hand. And in the end of the day, that was enough to become dominant there last night. So again, that just tells you what kind of level red catches at. And it, I'm sorry for people then maybe say like, so, oh well, he's coming off a good win against Alexander. Alexander's coming off like say his last eight fights, five of them are defeats, one's a draw. So I didn't even want to know who he's fucking defeated, uh, who, or sorry, who he's beat in that time frame. But um, there's obviously levels and stuff like that. And, and the, the way um, the commentator was talking there last night as well, 
you know, like Garcia is, you know, he's world class and stuff like that. There's, you know, again, we're all like define world class. He's maybe like top five in the division stuff, but again, it's just like they'll fight each other in the PBC. So they have like about round robin. You have got Porter, you've got Broner, uh, Garcia, uh, Spence will be coming in again at some point, and Pacquiao. I think he's coming in his last fight. He's dealing with stuff like that. So they'll then after they probably fight each other, they go away and fight like say your Tyrone Harris's Alexander shit like that there last night. And just to finish off on Jarrett Hurd and that as well, that guy fought a career welterweight. Hurd, that fight was at a catchweight, I think it was like 156, 158 or something like that there last night. He looked dog shit, I know. So um, either he needs to move up or what I thought was going to happen to him has happened. His prime was short-lived or he just needs to get up and weight and maybe see how he goes and stuff like that. But on, all, all round, that, that card was absolutely fucking abysmal. Abysmal. Yeah, we'll be coming to Jarrett Hurd very soon uh, on this for the show itself. I mean, it's been a, a slow start to the year for Showtime, but a very strong start to the year for us. Gabe Lewis has joined the call. We'll be coming to you very short, Gabe. Very shortly, Gabe. Uh, Danny Garcia winning a unanimous decision then, 117-111 on the cards of Glenn Feldman and Don Trella. Tony Paolillo only saw a couple of rounds for Red Catch, 118-110. Uh, JG says he should move up to 154 Garcia, he said something else I was going to pick up on. It. Oh, yeah, Garcia had to lose two stone in six weeks, was badly overweight and struggled in camp. He's washed, says JG. Don't know about you, hater Dave Lowback. You're back with us. One interesting point that has come out of this fight, Ivan Redcatch followed into the esteemed footsteps of some, f- of some famous boxing biters. Mike Tyson against Holyfield, Cash Ali, David Price. I think Derek Chisora might have bitten someone at some point. Redcatch, apparently, took a chunk out of Garcia. Dave, any more updates on this? <laughs> Uh, I haven't heard anything, and I didn't see it during the fight. Um, but it's hardly surprising if he did do it. You know, he's got—he's that kind of dude. Uh, he, I, I don't remember the exact. I know he's an asshole, and he's like well known as one. What was it? Was it Hank Lundy that he he posted like a, a picture of Harambe or something, and said that that was Hank Lundy, mm. something like that. Lundy, yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, he's like a racist. He's a douche. I guess he he does that to maybe. Uh, be, play heel. I don't really know his, his game. His knockout of Alexander was good, but yeah, Alexander, I mean, that draw you were talking about was with washed up quitter Victor Ortiz. So Alexander was nothing to... I I think Danny Garcia should be ashamed of the fact, honestly, that he lost multiple rounds against this guy. Um, that shows where he is. He's he's on the way down. As you guys said, I, I don't even need to say it. Washed, inact- the inactivities, I mean, a killer. Um, and he was never great to begin with. He was a very good fighter um, in his prime, but his prime was years ago. How, how many years ago was that Matisse fight? It was an under, undercard of uh, uh, Floyd Canelo, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it the undercard? Was it Canelo? I was going to say Pacquiao. Yeah, I think it was Canelo actually. Was it? Yeah, was it not Pacquiao? Floyd, was it not Floyd Pacquiao? No, no. No, the Floyd Pacquiao undercard sucked balls. It was like the worst. They, it had Lomachenko on there against like some guy who looked like he never put on a pair of gloves and <laughs> some other guys. It, it was like a showcase undercard. But the, the, the Floyd Canelo undercard was actually decent. And, yeah, I think that was that. It, it's that it's that old. I mean, that's and I mean that that's his last, like, peak performance. He, his, the fight with Brandon Rios was pretty fun, but Rios was well washed up by then, too. And he still dropped a bunch of rounds to him in a fun fight. Uh, what was it before? The, his last fight was uh, that that guy who who throws a lot of punches but has no power. I think he drew with Broner or something. Uh, Adrian Granados, yeah. Uh, he, like he's not if he's not being tested. I mean, you, you, although to be fair, Danny Garcia may be the kind of guy who fights to his level of opposition. He struggled with Kendall Holt and Zab Judah, who both weren't expected to give him that much trouble. So to to be fair, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he takes a big fight for him to, to get up for it but honestly no I think it's I think he's past it and I'd love to see him get smashed by Pacquiao but I, I mean even if he can make the weight again uh, it'd be funny if, if see him see him up at 154 he and Spence both headed up there because they can't make the weight and uh, maybe they'll fight be an intro for both of them to 154 
Gabe in the chat reminded me of another famous bite, uh, Marcus Madonna taking a chunk out of Floyd's hand. That was one that I'd forgotten about. Yeah, so a bit of Southpaw sparring really for Garcia. Aussie in anticipation possibly of Spence. Red catch, he can punch a bit, but he's quite raw. He reminds me a little bit, bizarrely, of uh, Roshi Warren. You know, he's like a Southpaw, busy doing nothing most of the time. He was popping his tongue out every few seconds, shaking his head. Wasn't really doing anything, was he? But Garcia, according to Mark Boxio in the chat, is absolutely washed. Would you go that far, Ozzy, to say he's washed? Um, I'm not sure about washed, because I, I don't think that, say, if you can still operate at fringe world level, I won't dub you that as he's obviously not a fighter what he was. And I think anyone trying to drop £25 in six weeks, you're essentially training just to lose weight. And I think we've seen it before. People who are dropping weight in a short space of time, it can affect that saying. It, it was a very laboured performance. Disappointing, to be honest. I think if you saw other bigger names put in a performance like that they'd be absolutely slated for it um very comfortable but yeah i think we were all expecting him to get red catch out of there with relative ease um i mean i, I agree i don't see him causing any problems um for Pacquiao, spence crawford um porter uh, anybody like that I put him at a level below so perhaps a fight with someone like uh, maybe a, a Davian Avanesian uh, a Lipinets. Um I saw something mentioned about a Kel Brook fight now if people are telling him you know Garcia to go up to um, to go up to maybe 154 Kel Brook's not really a big 154 and if they're both struggling to make 147 now then maybe a catchweight fight say you know like a 151 152 Maybe that's something that can be explored because I wouldn't say that's necessarily a bad fight, to be honest. Um, and it would give Brooke the name that he he's longed for in the, and it's better than all the shite that he's fighting at the moment. Uh, but no, all, all in all, a, a, a very disappointing performance. Is he washed? I would like to see. Him, I would like to see him get out again in the near future, um, just to see more of what he can do. Um, not pile this weight on again, and I think that would be a, a fair assessment to say whether it's whether he is washed, done and dusted, or he still has something to offer at that fringe world level. But as for operating right at the very top, not for me. Ed, the fans. Uh, what about Brook against Garcia, Dave? I think you were ready to jump all over that one. A pay per view near you coming soon. Just hypothetically speaking, if imagine Brook winning that fight, he'll be, he'll be saying, "I beat the man who beat Khan. I don't need to fight him." Um, but honestly, I think Garcia would would win that fight. I think he's got more left than Brook after that Zarafa performance. Yeah, putting the pathetic into hypothetical. Come on, Gabe, let's have a bit of love for Danny Garcia. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for him. I interviewed him in 2008 for Boxing News. Right, he was on the way up then, say 12 and 0, 13 and 0. He's like a harmless simpleton, isn't he? He's making his money, he's doing his little clothing range. Cut him a bit of slack, Gabe. You know, Danny Garcia, you can get on board this train with me, me and you together. Well, I mean, I, I don't guess I really ever have a problem with somebody doing extra things, you know, like their clothing line or making shitty rap albums or fucking whatever the shit it is they do. Uh, that, that never really bothers me. Um, what bothers me is whenever you've got a guy like Garcia who, uh, you know, lacks some of the physical gifts that some fighters have uh, and, and probably a, a bit subpar training because he's not really advancing himself. He still does the same things that he always does. Uh, I think that's whenever I have a problem with all the extra crap. Uh, he, he hasn't fought in nine months. Why the fuck didn't he fight for nine months? Prior to last night. Why the fuck wasn't he staying busy with somebody that was a little bit more reputable? Uh, what, what's the uh, Cuban gentleman that, that fights at 147? He's a PBC guy. Uh, Ugas. Why, why didn't he fight him in a in a fight to maybe mean something? You know, Well, Ugas somebody- is fighting next week, Gabe, so they could have fought to each other last night, really. No, I'm saying before that. You know, before, sometime previously... Um, I mean, my point is that there's plenty of other things that, that could be happening in terms of keeping this kid sharp. Well, he's not a kid anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. But, but you, you know, I've always really liked Danny Garcia in terms of, of what he does. You know, 
he goes into the ring with a game plan and and you know he's lost twice but somehow he always manages to find a way to win and to do what he does and, and it and it's one of those things that I find impressive because he doesn't have a whole lot of of change ups you know there's not a whole lot of things that he's going to do differently uh, there's not a whole lot of new things that he's going to pull out of his hat and and he still manages to to do what he wants to do even though you know he's going to do it he's, he pretty much tells you I'm going to do this watch out for it um you know and I mentioned before I've always been a, a supporter of Danny Garcia uh I, you know there was very few of 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 anyone really picking him to beat uh, Lucas Matisse a long time ago. And whenever that happened, I really felt like this kid's going to go places. He's going to do things, you know, maybe not have the beautiful undefeated record, uh, maybe not have the, the uh, huge, huge mega fights and, and take all the straps and unify the division, all that bullshit. Um, but he's going to do good things. He's going to make exciting fights and he's going to fight good fighters. And after that, he just fell off the radar and he has this, the only thing consistent about what he's doing is that he doesn't fight consistently. And you don't really know what he's going to look like. Um, last night, I mean, I think he did pretty much everything he could do to get uh, Red Catch out. Uh, Red Catch seems like he's maybe a little bit sturdier than we give him credit for. Uh, maybe a little bit sturdier than, than he's appeared to be at other times. Because um, Garcia was hit some really good, clean, hard punches. And, and, it, and it really... Uh, you know, seemed like he was going to get him out of there a few points. Like any minute now, he's going to land one, and it's going to it's going to really put a hurt on him. Um, you know, it just didn't happen, and that happens in boxing. But I think what people get disappointed about the most, and and I'm on board this wagon. A th- the thing that disappoints me the most with Danny Garcia is he just hasn't lived up to the potential that he could have had at this point in his career. It's really kind of late. He's got. Uh, you know, with his schedule, maybe maybe five fights left in his uh, in his entire career. Um, I say that jokingly, uh, <laughs> but you know, I mean, he doesn't have a lot of time left. If you look at the average career of a boxer, he's more than halfway done with his career, assuming he fights the the semi uh, normal amount that fighters these days face. You know, go up to forty, fifty fights. You know, we're already past that. So, you know, why is he not using this time more wisely? Um, because I love to watch him. I think the things that he does are, are enjoyable to watch. He doesn't really, like I said, have beautiful skills, but he does what he does and he does it well. Um, you know, I, I, I'm more disappointed than anything in the way his career's turned out because of, you know, just a lack of, of fighting and staying sharp. Because I think he could compete with any of the top welterweights anytime, uh, still to this day. So that's what I would like to see happen um, for him, but I'm not so sure that it will. Maybe he gets thrown in with Pacquiao. Maybe not. Uh, Maybe that's an eliminator to get to Spence. Who knows how the fuck they're going to do it. But um, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I think five fights for Garcia might be a bit optimistic. Just before you run off, Gabe, give me a quick word on Jared Hurd against Francisco Santana. Obviously, I'm not going to go as far as to say that Hurd's been exposed, but at a certain level... If you put it on him, if you're smart about your aggression, then he can definitely be got at, I think. Yeah, I think it's certainly possible that he can uh, uh, be beaten. Obviously, we've seen that already happen. But, I mean, he's just lacked certain skills his whole career anyway. So, um, you know, I, I kind of felt like last night was maybe a bit trying too hard to move away from what he's been and trying to do something new. Um, but, I mean, look, at, I, I don't know. It, you can look at it that way and think of it that way. But at the end of the day, you've got a guy that's a fucking giant who's a lot heavyweight fighting a, a, a welterweight, a career welterweight. He's bringing him up, you know, from 47 to 154, and he still can't put him away. He still can't finish the fight. I mean, what the fuck are we talking about here? What the fuck is going on whenever you have somebody that's that huge and they can't put – I mean, it's like fucking Julio Chavez. It's 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 the exact same thing in terms of this guy is massive. He's huge. Why can he not put smaller guys away? Well, you see why because he doesn't have the boxing ability. Cry you know, like like a he's got bitch. the size. He looked semi-quick at times with his hands. 
you know, his, his footwork is is bad, but it's at least work withable. You know, he's got a little bit of a little bit of intangibles and in, in quickness and strength and all those kind of things. But you got this guy boiling down, making 154. God knows how. I think he's on diuretics, to be honest with you. I don't see any other fucking way he can make it there. Uh, but I mean, it just, I, I'm baffled by him because he's got so many things going for him and he's, he, I don't know. I, I would like to see him get knocked the fuck out again, to be honest. Uh, that would, that would make me happy. Cause I just get like, I got tired of wasting time with this guy. Like the, the one five, four division is wide open, but he's not going to do anything. He might, he might win a couple more fights here or there. But, I mean, look at him. He has no boxing ability. He's gotten by on his size and his good chin, you know. And those are good things to have in your corner. But it doesn't make for good fights because he's a punching bag. He's going to wind up with with Parkinson's if he continues the way he does, you know, which is why he tried to change. But in the end, um, he just didn't look good, and it's not him. And I don't think he's going to have a long career anyway. Uh, I believe Andy touched on that a minute ago. I mean – He's just kind of one of those guys, the way he's fought before has led him to where he's at. But it's, I mean, at this point, it's it, it's kind of late to try to change it, everything up. I mean, you can try and fair play to him for doing that, but I don't see how it's going to, how it's going to work out in his favor. You know, he's not going to be able to learn all that shit that he missed out on early on. He didn't learn it early. He used his things that he has, his size and strength and those things and, and never learned them. And so it's going to take, years to go backwards and retrain that stuff. And you don't get it overnight. And you, you certainly don't get it whenever you fight a 147 guy uh, that's blown up to make 154. I'm not even sure what his official weight was, but you're not going to get it by fighting guys like that. You're going to get it by f- having challenges. And at this point, the challenges that he's going to face at the level that he's at are going to be the kind that beat the shit out of him. I mentioned it last week, Steve, about you know how that division is wide open for someone to try and take it over, but it's just a shit show at the minute. People are get they're taking L's or they're drawing. I mean, there's you know you would think like the, the most logical fight to get made next for uh, Eras Landy Lara would have been a rematch with Castanio, seeing how he got the draw. Right, yeah. instead of that, Castanio is now getting the mandatory shot against Texera. So that so if Castanio wins that, think about this: all the champions, all the belt holders at 154 are going to be owned by Al Heyman. So you can imagine what's going to happen there. You know, great times. But, what a time to be alive. We're going to get the big fight. So I mean, Charlo Harrison was that, you know, the first fight wasn't it wasn't fantastic. The second one was, but you know, they didn't seem to want to entertain you know these other you know big names so to speak kind of coming coming up. And that. I I just think it's 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 one of the divisions that is just begging. I mean, we've been mentioning it for years. It's been just been begging for someone to try and take it over, and there's there doesn't seem to be anybody kind of at the minute. Chap on the door. I mean, okay, we mentioned Madrimov last week and stuff, but I think Castano, while well, he's a talented fighter, I just think he, he does enough to possibly kind of like poss- possibly lose or draw close fights and stuff like that. And he just doesn't do enough to kind of get the, get it over the line. Um, Williams, obviously, as we mentioned, is going to get that uh, that rematch clause. Uh, God knows what's happened with Lara, by the way, and uh, Charlo as well. I don't know what, what his next options are. And, and that. I just just think. <laughs> At the minute, you'd be better just kind of try to keep your eyes on a kind of a handful of guys coming up, uh, come up the back end, like say, um, the Uzbeks and, and that, that kind of Germany, but oh. Well, I understand your skepticism. Well. I understand your skepticism, Andy. But if you look at it as well, we Laura fought Castano, Laura fought Hurd, Hurd fought Harrison, Harrison fought Charlo, and again Charlo fought Williams. Um, there was another one I was on the tip of my tongue. So. They haven't all happened, but they have been happening to a certain extent. I think they will happen eventually. Hopefully, they won't be too far over the hill when it does. But you know, they yeah. have, it's not like they've been a depth. You know, there's a few been made. Right. Well, see, see the Harrison rematch. That took almost a full year to get yeah, made. I know, true, yeah, I, yeah. I know there was an injury in between there. And we're just mentioning about Danny Garcia. These fighters are not active enough. It's purely doing it in the money. They're getting paid far, far too much. They're delivering shit performances. They're putting on shit cards. You know that one last night is a prime example. You know, I know it's, it's, it sounds like kind of sure grape stuff. But I know we're getting these champions and you know 
I couldn't even say their name, but you know, the, the, the big fighters fighting each other. But as I say, I just don't think they're fighting enough. You know, there is no reason that Charlo Harrison fight should the rematch should have taken that long to get made. And why the hell, if Castano and Lara are away, are away Heyman, why was that not an automatic rematch? It was easy to get made. You know, I just, you know, it's, it's just gripes like that. No, as I say, it's Julian Williams. You know, I rewatched the hard fight back. He was fantastic in that fight. Well, where was that urgency against the uh, Rosario last week? He didn't have it. So as he's just one of these fighters who raises to the occasion when you know when he has to, but because uh, I'll tell you one thing, he'll need to raise it for the rematch. I think because as you said last week, that Rosario isn't a, isn't an easy option for anybody in, in that division. I think he gives anybody a hard time. Just just and that's the first time I've watched him. So just basing it off that um, and knowing how these top end guys are fighting, like Charlo and 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 Lara and that, I wouldn't I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be shy in putting Rosario in with any of those boys. I think he would do more than enough to try and, you know, basically get the win. Um, I, I, I tell you what, if you want to push me for, for a fight to get made, I'd love to see, I know it's again a contract that's not going to happen, but at some point Rosario against Charlo, I think it'd be a fantastic fight. Yeah, it would. Rosario is hungry. Uh, Williams heard, as Andy mentioned, that was the other one I couldn't think of. Uh, further down the undercard, uh, prospect watch, Patrick Harris, 18-0. Uh, rumbling along against Clay Burns. Not sure what they're going to do with Harris. Uh, Stephen Fulton. He looks like a decent prospect. I didn't see this fight with Arnold Kagai, but he won it unanimous decision on all three cards. Ozzy, uh, back to Jared Hurd. He was trying a few things out, wasn't he? Now, Santana was very small in comparison. Obviously, he was coming up in weight. But he was moving, letting the uppercut go a bit more, moving about on the jab. Uh, can we forgive Hurd for working on things? If he's going to be thrown into big fights, he might have a few more things in his arsenal. But they were mentioning the commentary. He's 29. He's just moved out of home. His mom didn't want him to leave. It Maybe it's indicative of what Andy was saying. It's all a bit too cushy, isn't it? Especially for some of the PBC guys. Yeah, but... I don't necessarily mind this fight in general because if you look, like I said, at his past few fights, excluding the well-born one, which I'm sure he was coming off from an injury, prior to that he fought Willie. Uh, just after that he fought Williams. Prior to that he fought Lara, Trout, Harrison. I think he's entitled to to this one, particularly as a comeback coming off a loss. I mean, you see it all the time now. They rush back in in a big fight and they can get upset. Um, he wasn't. <clears throat> A spectacular performance and sometimes you expect you know like these basically him to blast out these you know like the, the smaller fighters uh, that santana was very what's the word from like gritty you know like very very tough uh, well, he was happy to stand in the pocket with him and that's that's against like what a six foot two supposedly yeah. like middleweight and that guy's a career welterweight who yeah. i think is coming off something like four losses in the last five i think i think i'm not too sure um, I'll have a, I'll pull up the record now. Uh, I mean, I thought. For, I mean, I know. It, I thought the bell saved him. Um, I, I mean, I mean, God, what another twenty seconds, and I think he would have got the stoppage out of there. But I, I can excuse this performance because I think if you look at his previous, um, his previous fights prior to that, he's been in with a lot of the division's bigger names. Um, I'm not really sure what they're going to do next with him. I pers- I mean, he's absolutely massive to make 154. How he does it, I do not know. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him next. I agree. Rosario is not an easy fight for anybody. Uh, you've got the you've got the Spaniard who um, who featured over here last year. Is it Sergio Garcia? He's obviously making steps up to world level now because he's, uh, he's dominated European level. Um, Soro is knocking about. I think he got... Did he get a good win or was he... Defeated last, I forget. I think Knocked he got out a good V two recently, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So Sor- Soros, I've just pulled up his record. Now he's on a, a five fight win streak. So there's a lot of fights to be made. It just depends whether Hurd goes straight back in and targets one of the bigger names, or he fights someone like a, a Soro, a Garcia, in in um, in prepa- in prepa- preparation for a world title shot again. I think Lara Andy, uh, as you mentioned before, you don't know what's up with him. I'm sure I read somewhere that he was considering going down to 147. <laughs> was it him, uh, him or Trout? I forget. I'm it was sure Trout. It was, it was Trout was it Trout? that said that, I'm sure. Ah, right, sorry. My Trout's mistake. fighting next week. My mistake. I, I couldn't remember if it was him or uh, Trout that said they were going to drop down to 147. And it was quite surprising. But if it was Trout, then um, I apologise. But no, I, I think I think there's fights there to be made. At what level, I'm not too sure. 
but I'm not going to shit on him for an underwhelming performance last night. Yes, he probably should have got him out of there, but we've seen these guys come up before, you know, the tough, gritty fighters um, who can, you know, can take a shot, um, can soak up everything. And sometimes, you know, it can be a bit of a, a what's it called as well, you know, a bit of a, um, what's the word, you know, being up for the fight. He's gone into it probably knowing he's going to win. He's worked on things. I think it's good that you see a fighter working on stuff, particularly after getting beat. So you've got to give him some credit like that. And again, I'll um, I'll judge him off the next performance. And fingers crossed, it is a significant step up from last night's opponent. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. Just announce everybody, Jason Chukwu is in the chat. Jason Chukwu is in the chat. Welcome to you, Mr. Chukwu. Good to have you with us. Hopefully, hey to Dave Loback, still awake. Any Jarrett heard views from you, Dave? I fell asleep. Um, I, I was going to say, uh, I agree with... Uh, just um, first of all, on 154 in general, I agree with Andy that it's taken way too long for these fights to get made, but... 154 is sort of a standout for me in the sense that a lot of these guys are at least fighting each other. Um, Trout, Lara, Hurd, Charlo, Thompson, now Rosario's in the mix. A lot of these fights, um, Williams too, That like all these names, a lot, almost all of them have at least crossed gloves at one point. Um, at least some you know, top guys are fighting each other at times. It is taking too long for the fights to happen, but you see um, O's being lost and then revenge. And then, um, you know, it, I think, it, I think 154 is an interesting division because at least, at least some of the guys are fighting each other at times regarding herd. I think he's peaked and he's on his way. He's, a, he's over to the other side and he's on his way down now. Um, he could, I could be wrong. I, I don't, I'm, I, I think boxing's at its best when, um, you know, I get, I get proven wrong about someone and and they show me that they're better um, as opposed to being disappointed, which is what boxing usually does to us. Um, But I do, I do think he's on the way down. Jarrett heard his boxing skill makes Alfredo Angulo look like Floyd Mayweather. I mean, (laughs) even all of his, his three big wins, um, Thompson, uh, Trout and Lara, all he, 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 all he did was eight, eight shots and wear him down i mean (laughs) his head must be like his brain must look like scrambled eggs at this point um and even against wellborn um wellborn was out boxing him and and even out fighting him at times uh wellborn was kicking his ass for like the first round or two and then herd's like because because i remember this right before before the fight herd's like i'm gonna show people that i'm not just a slugger i can box too he sounded like half punch drunk already at that time. I knew it was a mistake, and I knew uh, the guy can't box. He tried to do it against Thompson for the first couple of rounds and was getting schooled. Um, yeah, he can't box. His his is, is his go to is is what he's what he's always going to be, and that's like you know uh, try to bulldozer you. And uh, credit to him. I mean, he he makes the weight. I don't like weight cutting culture at all. I, I think it's bad for combat sports. But he doesn't use to his advantage um he uses that massive size that he that he, he's able to rehydrate to when he gets in there and that that's given him three very good wins especially uh trout and laura for me two two the laura one really stands out especially the, and that was a really good fight too the, the, with the, like the last round knockdown and all but no i i think that you know uh if he fought uh, the charlos he's getting knocked out either charlo um because I, I don't i don't know if he's going to stay at 154 he might move up to to, see, to meet Big Charlo. Um, the, both guys have power. Both guys are crisp, fast punchers, and his face is right out there to get smashed. I think he's getting knocked out against either of them. Um, other guys, um, he, he, you know, he'll be in possibly interesting fights. I think he'd lose a rematch with Williams again. Um, but that, I mean, at least that's interesting. Uh, I, I don't know if he should stay at 154 anymore, though. Um, it, it, this could be a sign that, you know, the weight's, the weight's killing him. And uh, Santana, you know, he was put in there for him to knock out. There's no, you don't put a guy with a record like that in there unless you to see him struggle with your one of your uh, one of your names. Hey, today this is the first opportunity we've got uh, you on this year to hear the big news. People want to know what your thoughts are. Seeing last week, Joey Spencer, prospect of the year, going in against your man Eric Spring. Did Eric do himself justice? He went the distance. Yeah, I didn't see the fight, but I um. I looked at the scorecards. Didn't he lose every round? 
uh, yep. which is <laughs> very expected. Um, though I've only seen Eric Spring fight once, and it was in person when he fought the guy from my hometown. Um, and he got a draw, which was a gift. My guy beat him. And then that's that's about it. His, his fans scream Spring Street, baby, when he fights. Uh, although I doubt that Redding, uh, Redding, Pennsylvania is kind of a, a, a poor area, especially the area he's from. So I doubt they uh, bought tickets to, uh, to to whatever venue he was in last week. It was on TV, so I assume it wasn't Redding, PA. Um, yeah, Eric Spring is uh, lucky to be on TV. Um, but from the sound of it, he did not make the most of his appearance. There you go, everybody. Top breakdown from Dave the Hater Lower back as always. Moving on next Saturday evening, Gabe. We mentioned earlier about the Super Welterweight. One man who's trying to boil himself down, but he will fight at Super Welterweight next Saturday evening is Austin Trout, going in against a man, Rosbel Montoya. Nine defeats on the ledger. So this is obviously to get Trout back in the groove. It's at the Inn of the Mountain Gods Resort and Casino. That sounds like a fun place to be. Tapias Promotions. Uh, Austin Trout, I don't know why, he's only 34, but he just seems like someone Gabe has been along for ages. You know, he seems like he's He's been around forever. I'd like to see him retire, but maybe I'm being a bit harsh. I know he's lost a beat, and whenever you're slick, you're a southpaw, you're able to move out the way of shots. All of a sudden, you're looking a bit leaden-footed, as he did in his last few appearances. I'd like to see him call it a day, but has Trout got one more run in him, do you think, Gabe, towards a world title level? No, I don't think so. <clears throat> um, I wouldn't... I mean, I guess it, I should say it wouldn't completely shock me if he did something... Um, but I, I really don't like feel like it's going to happen at all. Um, I, he's just kind of shop worn now. He's been in some tough fights, and he's never really been uh, a guy that was really able to take a lot of punishment. I mean, I think you saw in a lot of his fights where he was taking some punishment, he ended up uh, uh, kind of cratering to that pressure and that and and that that amount of landed punches by his opponent um you know i i don't dislike the guy at all but i mean he's never been one of my favorites to watch and and um his style is is to me less than pleasing um but he's a good fighter solid fighter uh, always has been always got a little bit of a dog in him even though he doesn't necessarily fight that way a lot of times um uh, I mean, I, I'm kind of like you, Steve. I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing him retire just because it seems like he's kind of getting fragile um, whenever he's in the ring. And, and, you know, I just feel like he's done a lot of good things. He's had a good career. Time to call it a day. I think he's probably made enough money unless he's just blown it all, which in that point, you know, go get a fucking job. Quit getting your head bashed in. Um, you know, overall, I wouldn't mind seeing him retire. I think that would probably be the best thing for him based on his last few fights. But, uh, you know, fighters typically don't follow that pattern. They, uh, they'll stick around past time. And, um, you know, maybe he can end it on a good note, on a high note. Uh, but, but I don't see that being the case. Yeah, Austin Trout's been on the mic a few times, so he can obviously string a sentence together. Ozzy Smith can also string a few sentences together, hopefully on this MTK Global card next Saturday evening. Unfortunately, I won't be in attendance, but it's a good card, especially the top four fights. Lewis Crocker moving up in class 10-0 uh, and 0 against John Fain over eight rounds. Would have liked to see that being a 10-rounder, actually. Gary Cully going in against Joe Fitzpatrick, 9-0 and 0 against 10-0, and 0, vacant Irish title. Sean McComb, who got uh, dropped in his last fight, is also 9-0, and 0, making a few waves, going in against one of these Argentinian uh, guys, Mauro Maximiliano Godoy, should get rid of him. And David Oliver Joyce, um, he lost surprisingly to Lee Wood. They're putting him back in against Lee Haskins, WBO European Super Bantamweight title. Bit of a bullshit on the line there. Decent four fights there, was he? What do you see the pick of those? It is, yeah. Um, I didn't even know this was happening, actually. So um, I'll, I'll tune into this next week. Um, I, I don't know anything about that Joel Fitzpatrick. Um, I, I haven't seen him before, but I like Gary Cully. He's, a, he's another one who's a freak who, uh, how he gets down to 135. He's massive uh, that way, and apparently really highly rated as well. Uh, I like Crocker, and I think John Thane's a good test. I agree. Um, this could arguably be the main event, to be honest, because I think that's a good contest. Um, it's a shame it's not over 10 rounds. Um, I've heard of that Godoy before. He was mentioned as a possible opponent for 
Jack Catterall about three years ago when he was uh, on the way up. Um, I, I, I think he's just one of these, you know, tough, rugged. Um, we'll somewhat come to him, but we'll undoubtedly outclassed. And as for the main event, Joyce against Haskins, I didn't even realise Haskins was still fighting. I thought he'd retired. Um, I know, I think he, he, I say he made a bit of a comeback. Um, I'm sure he had, like, whether it, whether it was early, like, le, like January, February time last year, he had, like, a little six-rounder or something. Or um, it was the end of 2018, I'm not too sure. Um, but if he is, yeah, look, it all depends on what Haskins has got left. Um, I thought Joyce was well and truly out, uh, well and truly outclassed um, by Lee Wood. Um, so it, it it just depends what Haskins has got left, to be honest. Um, I know Joyce was bigged up a hell of a lot um, off the, outside the ring, um, built up a record of pretty much against tin cans um, nothing spectacular uh, best win after that was steep that again was prior to what's it called Lee fighting Lee Wood was Stephen Tiffany uh, he destroyed him then I, I remember watching that so yeah it's okay and again I say it again MTK are doing the business um, it's not all you know about football stadiums and selling bucket loads of tickets uh, I've no doubt that it'll be a packed out crowd at Ulster Hall uh, and you've got four good fights on there as well as three younger prospects coming through in Stephen Donnelly, Patrick McCrory and uh, Sean Duffy as well. So all in all, a good night. And um, could we see an upset? Maybe. Um, I think Crocker should have enough to beat Thane. Um, but I wouldn't be shocked if Haskins is remotely at what he once was, which was, I mean, he won a world title, but was a more than competent European level fighter. Um he could certainly edge out David uh, Oliver Joyce um, over the 10 rounds. Yeah, the Ulster Hall is a good venue, not a bad seat in the house. I'd say Haskins probably would have retired, only they're dragging him out for a couple of paydays, and they'll probably keep going until the paydays uh, dry up. Lewis Crocker, John Thane, and the interesting fight. Crocker's a bit of a puncher. Quite one dimensional. He'll have to show a different dimension if he's going to beat Thane, who uh, will bring the heat to him. Now, Thane was a bit of a prospect at one point. I remember he had those back to back losses, Ronnie Heffron and Chris Carslaw. He's, he's lost every time he's stepped up, really. Bradley Skeet as well, Larry Akandeo in his last one. Uh, he's from Edinburgh. Do you know anything about him? You know, Was he really the prospect he was cracked up to be? Is there maybe one more run at British title level possibly for him if he were to get past Crocker? I remember the Heffron fight, actually. I thought he maybe done enough just, just to share that. Um, I was just, uh, sorry, Andy, I was just going to say, I thought he beat Heffron. Yeah. Um, I thought he was unlucky there not to get the result on the card. So, and as you say, he's, he's got beat off Carslow after that. And then Did he not go in the... It's just, I just don't think it's really happened for him, to be honest with you. He was, he was touted. Um, he, was, he was definitely brought in as... Uh, for, for sparring when uh, Ricky was champion and stuff like that back in the day so it was it was highly thought of and stuff and obviously you know Bradley Skeet there's no really any disgrace in uh, losing to him because Bradley at British level was always you know it was always a tough tricky fight for anybody um, I just think maybe his heart's just maybe not 100% in it uh, it, could be, it could all stem for that hair front fight you know because you know again I think he was, uh, he was away from home I'm sure that was that the one Box Nation or was that, that fight? Yeah, Box Nation, yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was um it was when they used to do little fight little shows at the uh at the Aintree Equestrian Centre or something yeah. like that. Because Heffron so, was the Ronnie Ronnie Heffron was the prospect, wasn't he? Mark came to the fore, but Ronnie was the excellent amateur and he was expected to go places. Correct correct, yeah, and then um I'm sure it was I, I remember seeing uh, his last fight actually in Lee, Liam Williams beat the shit out of him, absolutely battered him. It was at the MEN Arena, just destroyed Ronnie Efron. Um, I think they had high hopes for him, and then I forget, who did he get beat off? Was it someone like a Denton Vassell that mm, they were hoping for, been, like, yeah. steps him up and then Vassell but just destroyed him as well? So, yeah, um, whether he got a bit of home cooking on that a Tree show, it's probably fair to say. Uh, and then after that, I always think he's one Andy that he's just struggled for an opportunity of sorts. You know, like the chances yeah. he has had have always, you know, been at somewhat short notice or long periods of time out the ring or something like that. It's never been, he's never had that backing from where, right, John, we'll get you uh, one, two, three warm up fights and then we'll get you into, you know, like a, 
a step up, a, a more meaningful one. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, look, I, I'd love to see him, you know, get the upset because he, he always comes across as a really nice person on the TV, on the interviews, uh, on his social um, channels. He's really good, speaks to people and things like that. So, I mean, it'd be a hell of an upset because this croc is highly rated. Um, whether he can do that, I'm not too sure. But again, it's another one. His last fight, Andy, was in 2018 now. So again, he's had another two years out the ring. Yeah. Um, yeah after, I'm sure he had a, a fair bit of time off after the skeet fight as well. And I, I, I remember yeah, rightly right. now, there's a sprinkle of like four and six round bouts he's had in between, yeah. like, say, the, the Hearthron defeat <laughs> and uh, that one against Bradley Skeet and stuff like that. As I say, and then obviously you, you mentioned the kind of layoffs and that. He's doing it well away. I mean, when I first seen John, especially in the gym and that, he was like 154. He must be like six feet, six feet one. Mm. He's a big, big, uh, lanky guy and stuff. And I'm new. He's doing it well away. So right. I, don't know if he, I don't know if he leaves a bit of that in the gym or whatever and stuff. Yeah. But um, certainly, I mean, this I'd imagine he'll have a lot of body to fire at Lewis Crocker. I think. I, think I'd, I suppose he'd be giving up a wee, a wee bit of height and stuff. But no, I just think uh, personally, okay, I, I don't know the guy in that, but just just judging it for what I remember and. But as he's mentioned it, I just think his his heart's never really been been in it because he says he's been struggling for opportunities. He's got hosed on on that opportunity. I don't know if it was for the British title against Hearthrone or it might have been an eliminator or something like that. But um, after that, I just he seemed to kind of like fade in the obscurity and you know well doing on the undercards. Yeah, just looking at this Godoy who McCombs fighting, this is quite a tangential point, but I love them, don't I? So, um, Godoy, two fights ago, got knocked out by one of our prospects, one of these guys, me and Andy, are going on about a Kazakh based in Florida. There's quite a few of them. This is Jankosh Tararo, remember that name if you can spell it. 29 years of age, calls himself the Kazakh Kid. He's 24 and 0 with 17 knockouts. Having a bit of a look on YouTube footage earlier, and he got rid of Godoy, no messing about whatsoever. So, it'll be interesting to see what McComb does in relation to Tararo. I think he blasted him in about three rounds. So that could uh, give an indication of where he's going in the future. Also on the Austin Trout undercard, uh, I was going to mention this whenever we were discussing it. One to keep an eye on... um is Abel Mendoza, featherweight, 21 and 0, 16 knockouts. I saw him box a guy called Miguel Ponze Galaz in his last fight. Now, Galaz is my type of fighter. He came out and he said, I'm just going to lay everything on the line. And he threw six rounds worth of absolutely crazy looping shots to try and knock Mendoza out. He kept his cool, battered him to the body and knocked this guy out. So Abel Mendoza, 20, 21 and 0, 16 knockouts, featherweight on the Austin Trout undercard. Keep an eye on him. He could be pretty decent. Were you going to add anything in there, Ozzy? Sorry. No, 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 nothing for me. No problem. Let us move on. A few of the questions from the boys. We are waiting for Rapping Rob Kelly to jump in soon. I did have a question about Tyson Fury for Dave, but he's disappeared off to mess with his hard drive. Not asking any questions, Dave. Not asking any questions. What about this one then, Gabe? Joe Kennedy over on patreon.com forward slash boxing asylum asking the big questions. Gabe... How is Zerdo Ramirez ranked number one with the WBC and the WBO at 175 when he's only had one fight at the weight, which was a KO of Tommy Carpensi? Why is Ramirez ranked so highly, Gabe? We need some answers. Sorry, can you repeat that question? I can indeed. Why is Zerdo Ramirez ranked number one with the WBC and the WBO at 175 when he's only had one fight at the weight, which was a knockout win over Tommy Carpensi? Why is he ranked so highly with only one win at the weight? <clears throat> hmm. Well, uh, if I was... Is that a peanut butter good, Gib? <laughs> I, I was just going to drink whenever uh, Andy... Yeah, I mean, Try uh, to swallow uh, Steve, it when Mr. Steve was talking to you, didn't you? <laughs> No, that was soda. Oh, soda. All right, okay. Yeah, I was having some peanut butter. Do you like peanut butter, Andy? Yeah, fuck. Uh, Just a question. You don't have to get violent about it. (laughs) Hey, listen, that's just me saying no, I don't like it. That's how we say it here. Sorry if it comes across aggressive, but if you ask a Scottish good morning, baby, good morning, you say morning, you're like, fuck's sake, that sounds like a death threat. (laughs) <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Beans! What about beans on toast, Gabe? Sorry to get it distracted. Okay, um, toast. Gabe's doing anything to avoid this Ramirez question, aren't you? Come on, Gabe. I'm trying to help him out here, too. <laughs> well, I had a, I had a really good response. Uh, 
you know, I think they would be the one to answer this question. Um, but but I I would say it has something to do with Bob Arum <laughs> paying off the uh, governing bodies and uh, Biden some rankings. Uh, you know, I, would, I wish Dave would be here for that one. That's my thought on it. I really have no fucking clue, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, I mean, you talk about people. I know you guys always go on tangent about people with pointless careers. I mean, it seems like every couple of shows that that topic comes up. And this is my number one guy, Zerto fucking Ramirez. I mean, he he, he doesn't do anything. Um, I really have no clue how he got that high in the rankings in those divisions. Uh, I was trying to remember his title history. Um, I, he wasn't unified uh, before he moved up, was he? Nope. Unified? Uh, he barely fought a friggin' alive body. Well, I mean, let's continue playing the thought process here. He hadn't unified. He did have a title. Uh, I forget which one. Did, didn't he? Wasn't didn't he uh, scrape up the WB? The WBO, the which yeah, which one underst- which is understandable why he's ranked highly with the WBO at the higher weight because Bob Arum has a good relationship. Yeah, well, WBC, with WBO. Okay, so WBC. There you go. I came to the conclusion. This is what all the listeners are thinking. This is what all the non-Hispanic people are thinking. This is what everyone knows. The WBC is a bunch of corrupt bastards, and if they ever have a Mexican that they can put in the number one spot. Fuck you. They'll do it. That's why they're the worst about that kind of shit. They uh, they've done all kinds of terrible nonsense like that for years. Uh, they, yeah, they had uh, Luis Neri. Uh, he came off a of suspension and was able to compete for a title. Didn't have to work his way back up in the rankings. I don't even know if he ever actually dropped in the rankings, to be honest with you. Uh, it may have just been like a suspension where he held his rank. Um the WBC are literally the worst. If you had a if you had a German fighter who had forty seven and zero record, and they had a, a still wet behind the ears, you know fifteen and zero Mexican fighter, they would put that Mexican fighter with a higher ranking than that other guy. And they're they're disgusting because they do that continually. There's your answer, and I guarantee you that's the reality of it. They're the only body that appears to do that, except for the WB. Which one's in Puerto Rico? Is that the O or the A? A. It's the O. Okay. Puerto Rico's the O. They're, they're about the same with Puerto Ricans. Oh, though. sorry, A is Panama. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, WBO then. Excuse me. The WBO will do that kind of stuff with Puerto Ricans. Um, maybe not as bad as the WBC, um, but they're a little bit biased, I believe in their rankings at times too, but the WBC by far takes the cake. I mean, talk about a scumbag, a bunch of motherfuckers. And I would like to say that Mauricio Suleiman would roll over in his grave, but he's the corrupt bastard that started all that shit anyway. And his little fat son is the one just carrying it on anyway. So I don't know. Disgusting, but that's why that's exactly why. Disgusting says Gabe. Andy, what about this Josh Taylor situation? He's obviously uh, sacked off the McGuigans, gone with Bob Arum, but Bob Arum doesn't look like he's going to be promoting this first fight. This Kong Song, household name, I'm sure yeah. you'll agree, has uh, he's the mandatory for Josh Taylor. Samson Lukovic has jumped in and bid over a million dollars, million pounds, whatever it was, to get the fight. This is PBC-backed money. Have the PBC stolen a march on Bob Arum, or will he not be losing any sleep over this? Um... I don't, I don't know actually. I mean, obviously, you know, Aaron's been talking about doing a number of shows abroad this year. Now that's that's the first one being cancelled with Carry On in China at the minute, with Postal and Ramirez and stuff. I dare say he might want to do one in Scotland or whatever, and that with, with Taylor at some point. And I dare say Frampton will be the other one. And was it May time or April or May? They're talking about that fight with with Herring, but um, it's it's a weird situation. Like, I mean, the, the thought of that fight going to Thailand just it does amuse me. I just said Tommy would be there in a heartbeat as well, actually. But um, as I understand it, I was reading Asian Boxing a couple of weeks ago, and they said that the, 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 the Thai scene is really in a bit of, kind of stagnation. I, mean, I don't know if it's something to do with TV deals or whatever it is, but there's not been a, kind of, a lot of a lot of cards getting getting made or you know, getting shown or kind of like becoming available to watch, not like it's in your usual places like YouTube and the torrent websites and stuff. But 
Um, as for the the situation and stuff like that with, with Taylor and that, I'll, I'll probably get back to that bill with the weekend now because I want to add Shane in there. I think he's going to be a bit salty about the situation, but um, I've never seen the Thai guy fight. I, I think I've seen some. I think it was uh, one of the guys on Twitter who put up a kind of knockout compilation of him and stuff like that. So the guy's the guy's a bit of a banger, from what I can see. But I don't know who he's fought in all honesty in that, but. I suppose it could be one of these fights and that if Joffrey doesn't take it seriously enough he might he might end up getting getting clipped in that, you know, who knows? But um I just wait to see that but I, I would I would I would strongly think that a fight's gonna happen probably on if it's if the PBC do put it together, it's going to happen in America, surely to Christ. What a thought so let's move on. Ozzy, Joe Kennedy again throwing in another question. He said forget Conor McGregor versus Floyd, Pacquiao or Terence Crawford. Would McGregor beat Sam Eglinton in a boxing match? Would, in fact, McGregor beat anyone who isn't washed or beyond washed? What do you think, Eglinton against Conor McGregor? I think Eddie Hearn's salivating at the prospect already, was it? Eglinton, without a doubt. I would take I would take William Warburton to beat Conor McGregor in in a boxing in a boxing contest, without a doubt. And that's not like shooting on William Warburton for like what he is, but McGregor's rubbish. These people who think, you know, like, oh, yeah, he's this fierce puncher and, you know, he's got all these skills and he was having his... He got tired because he was... Floyd Mayweather was just taking the piss. He could have ended that whenever he wanted to. I would take any boxer over any MMA fighter, without a doubt, when it comes to boxing. Likewise, I would take pretty much any MMA fighter against any boxer in MMA rules as well, because that is what they specialise at, and that is what they are good at. Um, When it comes to what's it called, uh, boxing though, you've seen it before when they've tried to transition, the garbage, Um, and I think Eggington would destroy McGregor, um, and on that I think we need to, we can nip this conversation in the bud. No more of that talk, says Ozzy. Let's get that right out of the way over in Canada. Custio Clayton next Thursday evening. Big Thursday for boxing. 17-0 and 0 welterweight going in against Diego Ramirez. As you can tell, we are scraping the very dregs of the barrel this week. Steve Rolls as well returns against Gilberto Pereira dos Santos. That's his first fight back, I believe, or maybe second fight back since Gennady Golovkin handed him his ass. What should we do next on the schedule? Just flicking through it vigorously, trying to find a fight for you, Gabe. Still waiting on rapping Rob Kelly jumping on and joining us. Episode 357 of the Nutters podcast. Andy, Gabe and Ozzy with me, Steve. Going mad in the chat here. A few of the boys talking about this helicopter crash. Errol Spence wasn't in the helicopter, boys. He didn't walk away <laughs> oh, unscathed. Oh, Those rumours are not to be believed. Uh, rapping Rob Kelly's indeed joined us now on the call. Rob, how are you? Rest in peace, Kobe Bright. Oh, no. You see that YouTuber getting all upset there by with that Adam Saylor, or whatever you fucking call him. Am I Jesus. am I muted or I'm muted? What way am I? Can you hear me? Yep, Hello? we can hear you loud and oh, clear. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, rest in peace, Kobe, man. Fucking hell, that's 41 years of age. Hello, right? I'm not getting up in a fucking helicopter for nobody. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I was over in Vegas. Someone said to me, you know what you should do, Rob? You should get a helicopter trip across the Grand Canyon. Over the I Grand said, Canyon, well, yeah. Yeah, I should, have, I should hover in a metal can. Above some mountains and water. No, I'm all right, thanks. I'll be fine. Just swimming my feet on the ground. Take a picture of a phone or something like that. I was thinking I'm about this the other day. You know, the Lester guy. If... I mean, it's brutal, yeah. isn't it? Oh, Private no, jets, no. helicopters, fucking skydives, bungee jumps. Keep that shit. Anything where my two feet are on the ground, what, I'm all right. What I mean, these people are like multi, multi-millionaires. Just pay some lackey to drive you around wherever you want to go. Don't get it. They defy the law, these helicopters. Why people do it, I do not know, particularly after the the what's it called. Some of the private jets now. I don't know if anyone's watched that air crash investigation stuff, but I, I often wonder, why the fuck do we go on the plane sometimes? Because sometimes there's cost-cutting measures and there's lazy bastards doing the jobs. Now I'm like, fuck that. Mm. Yeah, it's scary stuff. Indeed, Rob, it's dangerous getting into the helicopter. It's dangerous getting in front of the fists of Danny Swift Garcia as well. Ivan Redcatch managed it, though, on Saturday night, and he went the 12-round distance. I'm sure you were up at 4am watching that all over it. I was just thinking if I had my own helicopter, I could call it the helicopter. But I still wouldn't get in it, you know, that way. Um, but uh, Danny, Danny Swift Garcia, <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't looking too swift, was he? <laughs> he kind of laboured to a, a 12-round decision against Ivan Redcatch. Southpaw, who's so awkward, he'd bite you on the neck like some kind of romantic lover. I don't know. 
what the fuck happened in that fight, man? It was probably the most that was the most exciting thing that happened in it. Um, Danny Garcia was pressing for the knockout. Um, he said after he wanted to get rounds in, but I don't know. I think he, everyone knows he was he 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 should be get rid of a guy like Ivan Redcatch. Um, he's putting himself back in the mix again at PBC for the 147 f- fighters. How I don't know because he's never beaten a live body at 147. Um, I don't want to say too much. You see, Danny Hunter was on, or Danny Garcia was on Troll Hunters this week, where they they got some guy. I got to send you the clip. I find out it's those two guys, two <laughs> black guys from the states. I can't remember their names, but they have a um, they do a little bit for ESPN. They do a bit of podcast too. They're actually very good. But they had a they had some waiter lad who was leaving abuse under Garcia's Instagram, and they found the restaurant where he worked, and your man was a waiter, and he recognized the two of them when they came out, and they were and like, safe. "What's the Danny Garcia?" He's like, "Man, he sucks." Oh, against we were like, "What about Granados?" It was a fucking lucky punch, blah blah blah. So then they pulled Garcia out out of nowhere, and your man's like, "Hey man, I was only joking." <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was pretty good. I, I'm I better not say too much against Danny Swift, or he might turn up at a restaurant looking to fight me. Um. I'm not. I've never been a fan of Garcia, guys. After 140, I, I was a fan of him in his 140 days. You know the Herrera thing, the Peterson thing, the picking the opponents, the fucking that he doesn't train. Like he said, what did he say? He lose 25 pounds. Fucking come on, lads. Like he's not even an unathletic built guy. It shouldn't be even that hard for him to keep the fuck away right off. Like unless you're just paddy and living wrong. Like so, a fighter who doesn't live the life of an athlete, who's probably let his prime pass him by, while getting paid too much money to fight. B level opponents is Danny Garcia, and now he's putting himself back in his in shot for a world title. I think if he wins a version of a world title, he won't hold on to it. He'll probably fucking party again, and he'll end up losing the title. I don't really rate him. I I, I think he has decent ability, and at one stage they were looking at uh, Danny Garcia as the heir to the Mayweather throne. Remember that back in the day before Floyd had his last three fights on Showtime. Yeah. <laughs> Floyd, Floyd had his last two fights against Maidana and the fight against Pacquiao. Everybody thought. He's going to have two fights with my dad and he fight Garcia next because he's the one up and coming. And it just didn't fucking pan out that way. Like, he's he's not living the life. We talked about it last week. He's one of them guys that doesn't live the life and does nothing for me seeing the Danny Garcia 12 rounds versus Ivan Redcatch, put it that way. Rob, good quick quip in the chat. Forget about the Kelly Copter. The Kelly Maloney Copter, says Tay Games. <laughs> where would that one rate you to Rob would definitely <laughs> ride that motherfucker <laughs> I don't know where it's been through the mill that, that one you wouldn't that get in, you wouldn't get on that on board that for a ride would you like? <laughs> no, I don't know like I don't know fucking hell but it's been out of control altogether that one um, <laughs> for the scrappy order thing what about ja- what about Jared Hurd <laughs> what about Jared Hurd Bob Jared Hurd Jared Hurd see anything him I heard, he, I heard he looked very flat though and um, uh, he should really be at 160 shouldn't he if he's, if he's flat like it's because he can't make the weight how did he how did he look uh, he was trying a few things getting on the jab it wasn't overly impressive but that's when you try things out against guys like Santana Carlos Santana might be better oh, <laughs> um, yeah no I didn't watch that man I doubt I'm going to go watch it back to be honest with you Okay, thumbs down from Rapping Rob Kelly. Let's move on then, boys, with the action for next weekend. Uh, next week, actually, Thursday the 30th of January. Aussie, let's come to you first. Florida State Boxing Commission. Eddie Hearn in full flow. Tevin Farmer against Joseph Diaz. A few decent fights on this, actually. I think Jojo Diaz against Tevin Farmer will be a good scrap. Expect Demetrius Andre to beat Luke Keeler, but I think Keeler will give it a right good go. Has a bit of power as well, and I'd love to see him do it, but I don't think he will. Uh, Anthony Sims Jr. When they announced he was fighting Angulo, I thought, oh, yeah, it's going to be... Uh, what do you call him? The other Angulo, Alfredo Angulo, but it's not it's Roma Alexis Angulo, so we'll put that one to one side. Also, Daniel Roman against Murajan Akhmedalia. I was trying to think, Ozzy, where I'd seen Akhmedalia ever get um, before. He fought on the. He fought a guy, oh, I can't remember what his name was, but it was on the Bivol Pascal undercard way back in the HBO days, so it shows how long he's been going for. He holds his hands a bit low, but he has a bit of a dig about him, and he'll keep coming. I think he might give Roman. The type of fight that that guy, whose name I can't remember, it was similar to Akhmedalia, who fought Mario Barrios. Anyway, he'll keep coming at Roman. I expect Roman to win, but the point being, there's some decent scraps on this. Eddie's putting on a decent card. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, I think it's quite good. Um, we'll, we'll start. Um, Andre Keeler is exactly what it is. It, it's more a keep busy fight for uh, Andre and then 
you know, look, it's a massive opportunity for Keeler. He, he picks up one of these bauble belts and gets a false ranking. Uh, and then look, when you're in the top 10, you're eligible, you know, for a, for a voluntary defence. He's done exactly that. Um, and he's getting an opportunity. Can he pull off the upset? Anything can happen in boxing. We've seen it before from Ryan Burnett's hip slash back going um, to, you know, magnificent one punch KOs from the underdog. But I think in this situation, it's probably a step too far. Um, Andre has been active under um, under Edward. Um, that's one thing you can give him credit for. So I don't see him, you know, being. You know, he's going to be rusty in there and he should have more than enough to see off Luke Keeler. Farmer Diaz, I think, is good. I, uh, I saw a lot of people writing Diaz off and thinking this is a walk in the park for Farmer, but I disagree with that. Mm, I think um, I, I think Joseph Diaz is decent. Um, only it's a bit the one paced, like... but, but he yeah. is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure Farmer has got quite brittle hands as well. He's not a puncher either. So it's not as if, you know, like Diaz has anything really, you know. You know, if he's got you know like thudding shots, he's got anything to be wary of. And I know Farmer has had problems with his with his hands before. So this is by no means, in my opinion, a walk in the park. And again, it's not as if you know he's he's over the park. Uh, Diaz had three fights um, three fights last year, so he's certainly ready. Um, I think this is a good fight, w- w- without a doubt. I think it's right to say Farmer is um, is the rightful favourite. But by no means is it a walk in the park. And again, I, I applaud this sort of fight. Um, all too often we can see some knockover jobs when it comes to defences. This certainly isn't one of them. Um, Roman against uh, Akma, what is it? Akhmad Aliyev. Um, I, I haven't seen much of the uh, of Akhmad Aliyev. Um, I've just had a look, quick look at his record. He can really punch. Um Roman, I've seen a couple of times. I, I mean, I've seen a few people who are, whose opinions I respect tipping up uh, at Medaliov to win by knockout. I think it was at around three to one. Apparently, that price has come in quite a bit now, and that was the one people should be looking at. So, I don't want to comment too much on that because I haven't seen enough of of the opponent. Sims Junior, don't care about twenty and zero now for pretty much twenty knockover jobs. Um, Amanda Serrano. Is this the one that campaigns at about eight different weights and just? I think it is. Yeah. Heavy, yeah, she'll be up at heavyweight next, won't she? Yeah, so she's <laughs> she's obviously in an eight, just a tick up. I mean, this is what I mean, an eight round tick over fight. If there's a reason to subscribe to the zone, it's so you can see Amanda Serrano against Simone de Silva over eight rounds, isn't it? But yeah. Oh no, that shitty YouTube Fuck fight. Is it? Is, 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 is it the zone? The is zone that what the? Hmm. It's what? I was going to say, the zone have actually got a fucking uh, 30 minute preview to Jake Paul when he pulled up to this say, fucking card. Yeah. I was just scrolling down now and there I saw it. Debut at light heavyweight, Jake Paul against Ali Esson Gibb. I assume he's another YouTuber. This is what it's going to be now, in my opinion. This is their marketing ploy, and I think they're going to get YouTubers lower down, or well, I say lower down the cards. Fighting, making, fighting each other on these cards, and hoping it draws in subscriptions to that channel. Yeah. Monitor lizards. That he's doing. already said it. That's what he's doing. Yeah, yeah he's making excuses this is, for it already this week. Yeah, this aren't they trying to put a sex offender on one of them or something like that? <laughs> Fucking hell, really? I don't know, Steve. I never got an offer, man, but I'm open to it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a legitimate one, not you. <laughs> is, is, is Jimmy Savile been cloned and fighting? Is yeah. <laughs> He's a big name in the UK. <laughs> he can fight Harold Shipman. They've been on the front of the papers. Got a great jab, Shipman. Oh, man. Savile, man of the people, done a lot of charity work. Good job, you can see it now. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I was happy. I was happy to give um, Edward some credit there, actually, because the, I, I mean, look, the Andrade Keeler fight's not great, but it's not. I've seen worse. So those three fights alone are, are good. But then I, I have to criticise it for this this joker, cowboy, Paul against Gibb fight. And this is what I mean now. And they will get more publicity. They will get more of an opportunity and things like that, more rather than like this, that Oath of Jones and other ones on lower down the card. And that's what I mean. It's just a new marketing ploy that they liked the first time with, who was it? KSI, Logan Paul. Jake Paul's now coming in. 
they're going to get somebody else and then they'll get somebody else and then Eddie Hearn's going to turn pro as another marketing ploy who knows who'll be fighting on these cards in the future but uh but yeah it's a shame really because the actual boxing fights are decent this this absolute laughing stock can just piss off because I've no interest in it yeah, one of the guys in the chat says Antonio Brown is the fella, Steve, with the legal trouble, so they put it in a less litigious manner for me. Yeah, to, the, the to NFL, to the he just, he's just got arrested there too. I think he's been, I don't know if he got held in remand or whatever, not, but he might have paid his bail or whatever, but he's a fucking loon ball, that one. He's, is, an, what, is Antonio Brown looking to turn over? Well, he's been, oh, what's happened is he's been seen in the, seen in the gym, uh, in a boxing gym, throwing yeah, saw the video. pads and stuff like that, and he looked stiff on a porn star's cock. His legs were fucking bad. His whole body and back was stiff as a fucking board, and all of a sudden people are talking about. You know, I heard that Michael Montero and that. I'll fight him. I'll. I know how exactly how to beat him. Well, did you expect the guy's not. The guy's not a pro fighter. Fuck sake, he's in the gym, probably throwing punches to get his cardio up, keeping shape or whatever. And that yeah. just because, just because he's a, like, like another athlete. I mean, I seen Stephen A. Smith and that uh, throwing punches pretty poorly, but a set of hand pads and that as well. But. Who gives a fuck, man? The first keeping the shape, they're keeping the shape. The fuck's it going to do with us? But um, to start talking about more, they're going to start turning pro. And that I mean, Antonio Brown, for all intents and purposes, the guy's got the guy's got problems, like serious fucking problems. And uh, someone needs to have a word with him before he does something absolutely stupid. Stephen A. Smith uh, obviously draws comparisons to a lot of legendary fighters. He has the same hairline as Thomas Hearns. That's where it begins and ends. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, what was he trying to hit him? <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh. Getting to the British Hair Clinic. <laughs> we are keeping them going, man. We're keeping the British Hair Clinic in business. <laughs> Box Asylum, sponsored by the British Hair Clinic. <laughs> Sorry, Ozzy, did you have anything else to add? No, 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 not at all, no. Yeah, a bit of housekeeping. Um, Isaac Zarate, <coughs> excuse me, was the guy that Akhmedaliev knocked out. And the other fellow I was trying to remember of was Bata Akhmedov, who was also 7-0, and who went the distance with Mario Barrios. So you can all sleep easy after I've put that to rest. Andy, uh, try not to put the listeners to sleep as quickly as me. Any interest in this card? Uh, Farmer Diaz Roman against Akhmedaliev would be the standouts probably. Yeah, that Medelev is the one I'm kind of really looking forward to. Danny Roman, obviously, he's, he's very experienced. Uh, I think he's not a unified champ or something like that. He's been on a, a really good run of form, for what I can recall. But uh, Alec Medelev is one of the Uzbeks we're talking about, former, I think it was bronze, at the, I think it was Rio. Um, obviously, if you look at the, the opponents he's fought and that, no really anything great to write home about. I know uh, Carlos Carlson has been... Um, been handed round about a few guys, and they've got Isaac Zarate and Yamanaka, I believe. And Zarate's been in with, um, and he actually got an upset win after beating, sorry, after getting beat off at uh, he, he actually beat the Argentinian kid, remember Steve, I was talking to you about um, Alberto Milan. So, we're talking yes. about a short comeback win for him as well. So, um, what am I talking about, actually? Is, uh, actually lost him I use that term it's something way off a tangent there sorry about that um, yeah so that's the kind of main one I'm looking at um, obviously Tevin Farmer well to be honest I think somebody needs to call him out on his bullshit and stuff like that because if he does beat Jojo Diaz uh, which at this point it could, be a, it could be a big ask actually I mean Diaz is decent and Farmer doesn't really hit all that much in that as well so it's this Gervonta Davis fight now I know Hearns might have made an offer to Davis, which is something around about four or was it two, was it three, two or three million dollars or whatever and stuff, and then Tevin Farmer's coming out saying he's wanting five million, so that that fight's just not happening pronto anyway. So we can just do, you know, exactly, mate. You know, they're all getting overpaid. This is what I'm talking about. They're all getting overpaid at the zone and stuff like that to the point that they're having to up, up the prices and subscription fees and stuff. And he's you're still getting fighters coming out. It's, it's like Leo Santa Cruz did against Rigo, pricing themselves out of the market. So. Um, you know, I think uh, Davis even came out and says he wanted ten million for the fight. So, and it was, I think that's an easy fight for for Davis if he can just get his ass in shape and keep in shape, basically. Yes, uh, Gilberto Ramirez was the man who beat this Roma Alexis Angulo, who's fighting Anthony Sims Jr. Any interest on this Florida card, Rob? It's a decent card for a Thursday evening or whatever time it'll be. It's supposed to be about five o'clock in the morning. You can watch it before you go to work. Is this the jo- the Diaz Farmer one, yeah? Diaz Farmer, indeed, yeah. 
Yeah, I watch that man. I, I watch I watch um I like watch a Tevin Farm where I think he's good enough value, especially on a Thursday, like yeah, him um, Diaz is a good fighter too. That should be a close fight, like I wouldn't rule out Diaz coming away with that. Like, I think Farmer's... I have a lot of admiration for him because he kind of did it the hard way to get in this position. But what I don't like to see, and I suppose it's natural from the fighters, is demanding more money. Just don't like to see it at the detriment of the matchmaking. You know what I mean? I'm all for the fighters getting paid fucking five million good. I'm not going to get any of it anyway. So he might as well get two, five as get two to me. But I don't want to see the fight, the matchmaking suffer, which is what's happening. Um... And I like that Uzbek. I've seen him before. Um, one of his earlier pro fights, this absolutely dispatching of someone, and he looks like he has the good skill wise. So he's one to watch. But yeah, decent enough card, man. Nothing, nothing. It's not going to fucking probably we'll forget forget it instantly and move on from it next week. But um, <clears throat> Farmer kind of he's he stayed active, defended. He's had a lot of fights, made a lot of paydays. Um, but I think this is a tricky night for him, definitely. I would agree. Akma Daly of being a southpaw, he could maybe finish the job that... Well, TJ Doney didn't really start the job, but he did a good job against Daniel Roman. If Akma Daly of can sort of take that onto the next level, up it a couple of levels and add the skill and the power that Dehaney was maybe lacking at times, he could get to Roman. Gabe, is that a fair enough assessment? Will you be watching this spectacular card? Uh, yes, I will be. Um... What card are we talking about? We're talking about a card <laughs> that you're going to watch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <And which card? laughs> I'm sorry. Which card would that be? It is Tevin Farmer against Jojo Diaz. Anthony Sims against Alexis Angulo. This is off the top of my head. Amanda oh, yeah, Serrano. Yeah. Roman. And Keela against Andrade. What about that then, Gabe? Uh, no, don't give a fuck about Andrade. I hope he gets knocked out just to get rid of him. Uh, I, I really like the uh, Tevin Farmer Joseph Diaz fight. I know that a lot of people uh, aren't big on Tevin Farmer, um, and Joseph Diaz has kind of been, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to describe him to me because I think that he was a little bit overrated whenever he was, you know, still early on. Um, but it might be fair to say that that maybe he's overachieved to to some minor extent to this point, I guess, or or perhaps. Uh, anything in between there, you know, so, um, but, but he's a solid fighter. I mean, I feel like uh, definitely not terrible. And so um, I like the different styles that that fight brings and it could turn out to be a boar fest with farmer boxing the ears off Diaz um, and not really making it too much fun. It could go the other way where Diaz can bring out a little bit of trouble from farmer uh, and and really draw him out of his shell and, and make him go to battle, um, which to me that would be the the fun uh, way the fight could go, and I would enjoy it either way though. So I, that that really the card as a whole. Um, I mean, I'm not big on any of the other stuff on the card. Uh, Danny Roman, I guess. I mean, it's a that's a good I'm fight. I'm not real familiar with his opponent um, in terms of knowing a lot and being able to kind of digest what might or might not happen there. Um, but but he's a solid watch. So between him, Farmer, and Diaz, I think that makes it uh, more than enough worth tuning in for that, though. Um, obviously, I'll probably stick around for Andrade and hopefully get to see him just flattened, but I don't know that that'll happen. Um, the rest of the card, you know, really, I don't don't really give a shit. Okay, guys, as we close out episode 357, we'll be going on to Bellew of the Weeks at the end of the show. Big stacked one this week. Last couple of cards. Also, Gabe is going to unload um, a feature on us. Unprecedented stuff here. He didn't mention it earlier. I'll come to you shortly on that. Also, Andy, I'll come to you on Macabu against Sislak over in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Before we do so, I'll just discuss this one myself. Mississippi, uh, your Dennis Ugas mentioned him earlier as a possible Danny Garcia opponent going in against Mike Dallas Jr. over 12 rounds, just ticking over at welterweight Ugas. 
before they feed him to one of the big guys. Also tailor the prospects on the undercard, one to keep an eye on and one to ignore. Michel Rivera, 17-0 with 11 knockouts. He's a lightweight, he's 21 from the Dominican Republic. I've seen a bit of him, he's going in against Fidel Maldonado Jr., which should tell us something more because Maldonado is not too bad. Anyway, Rivera beat up a guy called Gallegos in his last fight last summer so badly that he created a little hematoma, isn't it what they call it, like a big uh, golf ball appearing out of his head, so this kid can definitely punch. Also, a prospect not to keep an eye on, Jesus Alejandro Ramos, 11-0 and with 10 knockouts, he's uh, 18 years of age, and this is legitimately one of the slowest boxers I have ever seen in my life, I thought this kid was throwing punches underwater, I know that's harsh, he's clearly had no amateur experience, he, he can definitely punch, but at a certain level, and he does this funny thing with his shoulders, where he looks like he's showboating, or but, but I noticed all the way through the fight he was doing it, so it must be a little tick he's got or something anyway they're sink or swimming him against a guy called Ramal Amanov who's 16 and 1 so they're obviously going to see what Ramos is made of I don't think at this fledgling uh, stage of his career he's going to do much and then finally on this card I'm sure everybody's interested keep an eye on this cruiserweight fight between Dion Nicholson and Earl Newman Nicholson's 12 and 0 with 12 knockouts so he can clearly punch a bit and Earl Newman as we mentioned last week we were talking about guys like Michael Seals Amir Khan who get knocked out well well this guy Earl Newman he's 10 wins 2 losses 1 draw calls himself the Flash and last summer um, he got knocked out let me just see who the guy was he got brutally knocked out by a Nigerian prospect called Effie Apoche. 7-0, and the Nigerian pit bull. And he absolutely starched Newman. It's well worth a look. Apoche against Newman last May on YouTube. He's going in against Dion Nicholson. The point being, if Nicholson is as legitimate a puncher as his record suggests, we could be in for another highlight reel knockout. I won't burden any of you guys with that one. Andy, as I mentioned, Democratic Republic of Congo, Ilunga Makabe, we all remember him fighting Tony Ballou back in the day. Vacant WBC title against Michel Sislak, 19-0, 13 knockouts. Bit of a stiff one, Mr. Sislak, by all accounts, fought in the World Series of Boxing. Interesting note here, AJ Boxing Promotions has picked this one up on Friday night. So AJ is uh, reaching out into the African boxing market and promoting Macabre against Sislak for the vacant WBC cruiserweight title. Yeah, well, was, uh, I'm surprised that it's still going ahead because obviously Don King was, was getting involved saying um, you know the fight would be made against his knowledge and mm. permission and stuff like that. So we'll, I don't know if, if it will go ahead or no. We'll wait and see. But did you say that AJ was involved with us? So you just wonder if they managed to get the rights for it or whatever or not, you know? Mm, it says AJ Boxing Promotion, under. Right, right. Okay. Um, the last time I, I recall was seeing Macabu, obviously everybody remembers the Bellew fight and stuff like that, would be, I think Kudryashov knocked him out. Um, I don't know how long ago that was. was I think it was maybe Didn't last year. Did prospect, sorry to interrupt you, against, on the... Kovalev Yard undercard, I think it was. It was like an undefeated prospect, I think he beat. Yeah, so. majority decision when I Papin, 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 yeah. Papin, or, Papin yeah, or whatever Papin, yeah. it is. Yeah, um, I don't know really. To be honest, mate, obviously, I've, um, I think at this point, again, it depends. A, if it goes ahead, and Sislak, who, well, he himself, he's, he's picked up a couple of names, but you know they're faded as well. Duradolo and Kalinga, and that. Kalinga's seen better days than that as well. He had a tough war against the uh, Dortico. Yeah, that was a yeah. that was a tough tough fight. Um, to be honest, this this pole, he can switch stance, he can he can go to work, he can th- let his hands go, and you know the thirteen I think it's thirteen knockouts he's got in that on nineteen wins. Um, he's the, he'll need to be respected because um, if he gets you hurt, he does tend to go in and try and end the fight, and he will you know maybe force a stoppage and stuff. So I'd probably say at this point fifty fifty considering how it's. Um, you know, it's Makubu's backyard, so to speak. Um, you know, again, how much has he got left? But I think um, in terms of freshness and stuff like that, like is definitely a fresher fighter, regardless of his age. I think he's about thirty now and stuff. But no, I'm I'm, I'm going to say Sislak uh, wins, and I'm going to say he does it by stoppage actually. Wow. Sislak so wins. Yeah. yeah, interesting. A couple of points about Sislak I've noticed. First of all, he's bought back the temporary sponsorship tattoo on the back yeah, that used to that. be popular. Do you remember Sven Otka used to have Condomi and Bernard yeah. Hopkins had like some casino company, didn't he? Do you remember in the the Felix yep. Trinidad fight? So he's bought he's bought that, but he's quite he's quite <laughs> stiff, isn't he? As Rob says, he's straight up and down, no special effects. Sislak, but he can clearly punch, as you say. He can clearly punch, but he definitely switches stances and that as well. So it might geek. Um... Macab is something to think about. I know Macab is, you know, he's had his own knockouts and stuff like that, spectacular ones. I was just thinking about the other one with sponsorship on his back, and that was uh, Vidalcic. 
he's he's been yep. prone to do it as well. So yeah, I just think maybe kind of in terms of freshness and uh, stuff like that as well. Um, I'm going to go with Sislak in this instance. Um, might be a, a a hipster pick, I don't know, but I say I've not seen much uh, Macabu since the since, really since the Bellu knockout and stuff. And uh, so I think who was the other one? There was another. Run African cruiserweight that I like. He, I'm sure he, he fought. I need to go check his record and stuff. But uh, mm. I was sort of interested because uh, usually these African fights are kind of hard to get footage of after the fact, you know. So anybody who gets it uh, first, let us know ASAP so we can get it watched because I'm quite, I'll be quite interested in this one. Yeah, I think Maccabi with home advantage, if he's fitting on point, should lead Sis like a merry dance. Now, if, you, if you've got a spare couple of minutes and you're a bit of a hardcore helmet like us, go and look up the Sis like against Doradola fight on YouTube. The footage isn't the greatest, but it's so... The, the atmosphere looks amazing in there, but they have these sort of... It's like an you know an MMA cage and that sort of yeah, fencing you put around the garden. They have it on the bottom of the ropes. It's as if they're yeah. trying to stop people from jumping in. And then whenever it's his like wins, you look in the crowd and it's proper Arta Spilka, tattooed, steroided, Polish yeah. hooligan type. So you could yeah. see why they've got caging on the bottom of the ropes, Andy. No, it's, it was actually it was a mixed uh, card, mate. It had MMA fights oh, on the back. Okay, card. okay. I remember, I remember right. watching it. Yeah, that's the reason why I remember being a, you remember being a switch hitter. I think it might have been his last fight, actually, believe it or not, that card. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why then. Uh, Aussie. I don't know whether you or any of the guys want to comment on this. Terry Woodfine sent it in. Not a value of the week. It's probably more than that. Is it worth discussing what the hell is going on with Nathan Cleverly on the pod this week? Looks as though he's completely lost the plot. I don't know too much about Cleverly. Every time I go over to his Instagram or his Twitter, I can't necessarily see these tweets. He might be deleting them. Someone says he's smoking the spice and walking around like a zombie. This is a guy, former world champion, a maths, um, you know, maths degree guy. And what's going on with Nathan Cleverly, Aussie? Any, any intel? Not a clue. Probably just enjoying his life, isn't he? If that's the case. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen anything. Um, I saw one where he looked like he's put loads of weight on, but I'll check out his uh, profiles now and see what pretty much what he's up to. But it can't be anything worse awesome. than um, well, what's his profile? Can't even find it. I couldn't find yeah. it. Leah the alcoholic frotch says Cleverly's Instagram is amazing, so it does sound oh, like yeah, a bit of a car crash. That's what I was looking for. What's his user? Do you know what know. it is? What is it, Lee? Rob, do you know anything about this? You seem to be in the know. No, I don't know. I, I just think that's very sad if, like, he, if he's actually smoking spice. Like, like, as you said, a guy who was actually pretty highly educated. Like, um, he's smoking spice. O- overachieved. Maybe someone made him watch back the Bellew rematch. And that drove him to smoking spice. <laughs> I can't confirm that. Someone did mention it on Twitter during the week, though. Clave the G, it's called on Instagram. Clave the G, maybe he is smoking the old spice. The old Let's spice all go over together, shall we? Whether you're yeah, listening live on Mixler <laughs> or during the week, yeah, let's all go over live to Clave the G on Instagram, everybody, shall we? And have a look, see what we can find here. Let's see. This is great radio, me typing into Instagram, see if we can find a bit of Clev action. Anybody see anything? I've oh, seen yeah. some pictures not here. Where's, yeah, where's he going? Right down, yeah. The king kills a bunch of motherfuckers to become king, and then he kills even more to keep the crown firmly on his head. <laughs> you want to be a king, you pay the price. And there's a picture of him lying on a beanbag uh, with, yeah, a towel, with a towel wrapped around <laughs> smoking Watching Game of Thrones, was he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, could be, he could be smoking a blunt there for a while, I know. Because yeah. it looks like it's, it's, it's a brown wrap he's got there, but how do we know yeah, I, wouldn't hold, I wouldn't hold that against him. Fucking hell, yeah, man. I know, man. Against him. Clems, that... rock out, man. Do your thing, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Be the king. Rock out, smoke it out, get your cock out. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll follow him now. Have you seen his missus, man? <laughs> Steve, we'll do an official Clev watch. Um, yeah. So we'll wait and see, and then we can report back like we do with... um Prince Patel, yeah. yeah, yeah, like we and do. So, we do updates on the live. We, we, do we know what Soul's doing? Is there any Bolivian trivia this week? What's what's going on with our Soul? Oh, Sackle oh. Barrett. Let me take a look. Forgot about him. I can't see any Soul updates. No, no. Oh, he's got a fight scheduled in. <laughs> it's not against not- Edmund Talabari, is it? <laughs> No, no, it's not. Uh, but, but no surprise, he's already fought this guy before, so it's against Lu- Luis Gregorio Castedo Yapovende. 
one two and three. Fights ago, two fights ago in Santa Ana del Yakuma, uh, Saul Farah knocked him out in two rounds, and they're having a rematch for the Bolivian title. <laughs> Must have been a controversial two round match. Yeah, good. yeah. So let Saul me... was refereeing as well that fight. So here we go. So pr- promote promoter is Lillian Tarag- Taraga Gonzalez. The matchmaker is Saul Farah, and no doubt the referee will also be Saul Farah until the main event, and he'll uh, no doubt call in one of his cronies. Yeah, lads, oh, lads, you man. see where it says Bolivian heavyweight title below? Click on Bolivian heavyweight title and look at the lineage. I'm going back as far as 2009, and it's like <laughs> all Saul constantly, then Tababari, then back to a load of Sauls again. <laughs> Tababari... Of course, in no way related to the Taliban who we bravely fought in Afghanistan. <laughs> look, look, look how many times he's boxed Rosendo Mercado. <laughs> he's fought him five yeah, but eight times. times. He but defended it three that. times in a row against Mercado. Th- the same title three <laughs> times in a row. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> So it, it this first, time it's personal. It first, oh, came on the scene back, it first came on the scene back in 2009, and it was for, it was actually it had a new name then. It was called the Santa Cruz de la Sierra State Heavyweight Title, and Farah won it on points against Antonio Salas. Oh, it's fucking chaos! It's funny that. It's funny. If anybody ever goes to Bolivia for whatever reason, try and hook up with Saul Farah. You'll uh, you make a bit of pod history. Into Bolivian. Oh, uh, pulling pulling out of Bolivian here. <laughs> oh my Hate to God. Dave Loback. Look, look at the picture of um, the latest opponent, that Yapo Vender. He's apparently 41. He looks more like he's 50 or 55. Heavy, 41 heavyweight. And that's <laughs> it. Yeah. Look at the state of him. Fucking, Fucking hell. hell. Embarrassment. Oh, yeah. that's brutal. That's brutal, Honestly, isn't it? It's funny, but Farah's clearly the. He's like the cart. He's the Bolivian cartel, isn't it? When it comes to boxing, he what he says goes. Matchmaker, promoter, inspector, commission, referee. Funny, funny. There that. we go. So all Farah update. What we're going to talk about next? Well, that was that came from Nathan cleverly, didn't it? Right, Tater. No, Gabe. In fact, Gabe. I believe that you were going to do an impromptu. Uh, version of WBA champion or serial killer. I have no knowledge of this, so I am bowing to your superior knowledge here on this one, Gabe. Go ahead. Yes, we're finally going to play WBA champion or serial killer. Uh, so I guess I'll give everybody a name. On the game show host voice here, Gabe. Yeah, I, 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 I've been working on that while you guys Me! have been chatting shit. Yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> uh, I guess what I'll do is, yeah, I'll, I'll ask each one of you guys a uh, a name, and then you tell me, and we'll go from there. So, yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. We're going to take a stab at it, though. So, let's see. For I'm 10 gonna... points. To Robert. Robert, are you there? Yep, <laughs> I'm here, live and direct. <laughs> Feeling Robert. good, feeling confident here. Pedro Lopez, is he a WBA champion or serial killer? I feel like Pedro Lopez has a few bodies. I feel like he has a name with a few bodies on it. So I'm going to say serial killer, Gabriel. Okay. Uh, Eddie, Steve, Oz, anyone want to have some input on this one? What was the name? Sorry. Pedro Lopez. Before I answer, Gabe, I just know that, you know, should you know be asking me what I'd do for a living first before I answer your question and stuff? Say we're doing old game show host stuff, you know? Oh, sorry. Well, uh, uh, Andy, what is your job? None of your fucking business. <laughs> Price <and> you trade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Pedro Lopez, is he a fucking killer or a champion? Sounds like a killer to me. Yeah, serial killer. Twenty-three yeah, bodies. Yeah, killer. I'm I'm going brutal, like chopping up the body type of killer as well. Yeah, I think he cut this head guy... off and skull fucks him. <laughs> wow. Well, it sounds Operation like maybe you thought about maybe changing your job to serial killer. Uh, 
this guy is a serial killer, a Colombian serial killer. Of course, uh, he's a Colombian. Uh, anyone want to take a yes. guess on how many bodies he, he apparently uh, has on his record? Oh, he's in double figures. Pe- oh, yeah. Double no, no. figures, Pedro. I'm, 109. I'm 109. Yeah, so Stevie, you're pretty close there. This guy apparently uh, was sentenced for killing 110 girls uh, across Shit. Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. So he's a South American cat. Ecuador. Uh, and when, I say, we know when I say girl, <laughs> he was a child killer. Uh, he killed and raped them. Uh, he claimed to have over 300 murders on his ledger. Robot but uh, still last see. I can see, 110. Um, he actually... Went it sounds in. like Johnny 500 for Con Air. <laughs> Operation U train. Oh, God. Uh, so he actually was caught and went to prison, but apparently got away. So stay the fuck out of South America if you're a young child. Next He's up, fighting uh, Saul Fowler next week, Gabe. Yeah, he has a chance to become the WBA champion and serial killer, both at the same time. It's hard to get off out of a child killer, but we do it. Dave, I actually was trying to see if any WBA champion had become a serial killer as a trick question, but I couldn't find one, so I'm going to do some more research. Maybe that's for a future episode. Uh, Who's up next? Who wants the next one? Go on, I'll take it. All right, Stevie. Zhang Renbao, WBA champion or a serial killer? He's, pu- he's probably Zang the, the source of the outbreak in China, so I'm going to go serial killer. <laughs> 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 Coronavirus. I thought I had that in Mexico before. <laughs> coronavirus. Oh, I think Andy <laughs> had that, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Happy get, hour. See if you get coronavirus, you get Lyme disease as well. <laughs> The full trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> Light disease, your bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to keep things moving, Gabe, I'll say he's the interim super flyweight champion. And you would say wrong. Bow, bow, bow. Stephen is wrong. Zhang Renbao is a Taiwanese serial killer. Uh, apparently not a huge number. Only three. Ooh. But uh, rubbish. Bollocks, that's not a serial yeah. killer. This is for, oh, this is a bad temper. We're not for having that. <laughs> <laughs> they were in series, Robert. Technically qualifies. <laughs> Overruled. Uh, let's see. Andrew. Oh, yes. This one is for Andy. WBA serial killer. Or, excuse me. WBA champion <laughs> <laughs> or serial killer. Alexei Igorov. Uh, I'm going to say serial killer. There's quite a few of them there in Russia there, actually. Uh, you would say serial killer, and you would be wrong. Bow, bow, bow. What, he what, what is belt actual... seal? What, what's that? What, what version of the WBA belt does he hold? He is the WBA cruiserweight gold champion. <laughs> Go to Fuck. <gasps> Household name him. <laughs> you Asian boxing partner. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shit, even the dog doesn't like that one. Is... <laughs> uh, let's see. Who's left? Dave. Is Dave still there? Yes. Okay, Dave. This one's going to be for you. <sighs> I gotta practice on this one. Nikolai Zumagaliev. Um, that sounds like one of those guys you'd see in the World Series of Fighting. Maybe he picked up a strap. I'm gonna say WBA champion. And you would say wrong. He is a Soviet serial killer, also <laughs> known as the Metal Fang. He is a and killed and murdered mostly women, save for one friend in a home that belonged to him at a party where other members of the party actually witnessed him cannibalizing his friend. I hope you fucking die. Wow. Wait, that was wow. the experience. Yeah. 
Um, you saw stand there and watch him, mate. No, do fuck all. Would you stop him? Well, I'm thinking if, if, there's a, if there's a gang of these, you could all go and get blades and fucking bats and that and see to them, you know, for fuck's sake. They're all like, stand I'm there. Sure hey, Henry. There was a... hey, Henry, you can have the wing. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, the way I understand what happened is uh, he somehow got the oh, friend well, I mean, I into another room of me. the home and was in the process of going after him when I guess the other guests realized that two members of the party were missing, decided to see what the hell was going on, and that's when they discovered him. So they called the cops. The cops get there, and they're shocked, which allows him to escape, I'm going to assume, jumping out a window, and he goes off into the forest naked with nothing but a hatchet. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Nathan <laughs> out there. <laughs> oh, he was doing. He was doing. He was doing an oddly Harrison. <laughs> this is sounding a lot like Kell Brook's trip to Tenerife. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a champion for today, Robert Kelly. You're the winner. Come on, come on. Yes, yes. If anyone's been slashed and raped, Rob's all over it. Well done. Dude, these guys are not Alexander. I'm Alexander. <laughs> He's no Alexander. <laughs> Here, Gabe. MB in the chat says, your Google history is going to be awkward to explain if your missus starts asking. <laughs> well, she'll get what's coming to her if she fucking starts snooping around shit. <laughs> his lad in one hand, his hatchet in the other. <laughs> Remember, Gabe, oh, run, run, run the sea cleaner before you go to bed tonight. Oh, don't worry, I've already got it down, though. <laughs> A cleaner of every description. Thank you, Gabriel, for that edition of WBA Champion or Serial Killer. Bit of fun. Jeremy Hitchcock came up with that originally. Thank you. Give the creator his due. Uh, talking to Jews, hey to Dave Lobach's with us, so is Rob Kelly, Gabe Lewis, <laughs> Ozzy. <laughs> uh, oh, lovely play with the board there. Uh, oh, man, well, he's on fire today, fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, Hater. if Gabe gets hold of me, yeah. Hater. There you go. Hater, are you still there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, are you still got your foreskin? <laughs> 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 lips, his lips in the kind of cuspus there but... as you know uh, it's part of my culture <laughs> me of the yamaka wearers <laughs> to lose that part <laughs> oh that, that Matthew Hunter guy over here fucking come he just departed there and looked for the nearest bridge to jump off yeah he picked a good one to listen to he's going to listen to this week's one fucking hell <laughs> there must be some demographic, demographic even we haven't defended yet. Maybe in the belly of the weeks, hopefully. Oh, I did okay. Well. Well, I, I, I had a show in Cork the other night, and uh, in the bar, no oh, fuck, <laughs> in the bar, there was a lady who was around sixty, and she was having her birthday party. She was a lesbian, and so were all of her friends. And they were all in there in the three piece suits. And I shouted all the girls out for being in the venue on stage and said, They're dropping the ball if they don't call their pool club the LBGTQ club um, for, the pool, for the pool. So that went down well <laughs> with the girls. <laughs> when are you going back? Yeah, I think they're having me back for the Christmas party. <laughs> Yeah. I thought that was a good I'll see one. You there. <laughs> <laughs> right, Andy, anything to throw in before we go on to Belly of the Week, or should we just get on with it? Just go on, mate, mate. Just get on with it, indeed. Yep. Dave's here, Andy's here, Ozzy, Rob, and Gabe. Quite what a few to get through. Week? I'm sure the boys have got some. Yeah, oh, yeah. We all know what probably will be the winner, but don't be surprised. There's a few decent ones. First one coming in from Lagboat. Eddie Hearn was mentioning he's going to put the Fury. Joshua fight on in Saudi Arabia if it ever gets happened. Lagboat says fucking traitor, never go into a matchroom show again and if I see Eddie Hearn in the street I will spit in his face shame as well as I like Dillian White but until he moves to another promotional company I'm not paying a penny to watch him. Hope the worst for him in life. Also after that Alfie Holder 2012 jumped in in reaction to Eddie's Saudi Arabian uh, announcement Eddie would have staged fights in Nazi Germany if they paid him enough says Alfie Holder 
He knows Eddie then. You know, David Farmer nominated this one, Tim Boxio. Now, this was a classic, lads, and if you ever see this um, on Twitter this afternoon, 42-year-old heavyweight Colin Sangster, 2-0 and with two knockouts, was dropped by 412-pound heavyweight Andrew <laughs> Case Allen, 0-1, in the first round. But then the 41-year-old, uh, sorry, 42-year-old Sangster violently stopped Case Allen in the second round for a KO2 victory in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And then there was an amazing picture of Case Allen. I mean, he makes Andy Ruiz look like flipping Celestine Caballero. This guy falling to the floor. I put it up on Twitter. I don't know if anybody saw it, but it is quite the brutal spectacle. Do you see it, Andy? These two I fat never saw it. I'm going to go watch it after we finish with us. If you can just link me up with it. I will indeed, it's pretty horrific. Here's a good one as well. You put this in, so did Marcus Bellinger. Samson Lukovic, Josh Taylor versus Kong Song will land in either Great Britain or Scotland. Samson <laughs> getting on the independence train, under. Well, I we must have had a sick referendum. I didn't know anything about it. I must have fucking slept, walked right through the fucking thing. See, that was... Uh, it, always, it always pissed me off in that, right? Because, see, you see when it comes to, like, Great Britain, you see, like, they say Germans, uh, Germans, for example, they always seem to say uh, class Great Britain as the fucking English. You know, did they add the Irish and the Welsh in there as well, did they? But I... Well, some of the, some of the Irish don't want to be in there, Andy. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> there, is a, there, is a, there is a wee county up the northeast there that they kind of would argue that one. <laughs> Get him in the helicopter. Uh, Matthew J. Hunter has been nominated. Uh, talking about the boxing rant, these dudes continue to be some of the most bigoted podcasters in boxing. This was before he uh, tuned into us tonight. I think about five minutes probably would have done him. Matthew, if you're still with us, welcome. Hope to have you back next week. John O'Donovan has nominated Andrew Ruiz. Uh, he's living the life, wasn't he, Ruiz? Telling people to like and subscribe to his channel as he goes around with his gold and his cars. Uh, Jamie Coleman threw in an absolute cracker here. Boxing will never recover. Tony Bellew was talking about uh, people, uh, boxers on drugs. Not at all, says Tony. I have known people and friends to fail a test due to an energy drink or an over-the-counter product. However, I wouldn't be friends with someone who's actually injecting PhDs. That's for sure. <laughs> Professional... <laughs> Oh, Professional funny. boxing is dangerous enough is, without the cheats. <laughs> Andy, have you ever snorted uh, a diploma? <laughs> well, I think he, he, he isn't is aware that he can actually take steroids orally rather than injecting it. He's been watching too many Rocky <laughs> Balboa films, I think. Uh, nobody nobody uh, fucking injected him with a PhD anyway, I'll tell you that was. <laughs> <laughs> he was out that day. I smoked, I, I, I smoked my degree in two years, though. <laughs> Oh dear. What do you what do you think, Dave? You ever injected any PhDs? I never made it that far, only bachelors. There you go, hey to Dave, the brains of the pod. Uh, certainly not the brains this week. Chris Eubank Jr. getting nominated from Sam Dorset. Police warning, <laughs> says Chris Eubank. He was warning the burglars and the thieves. Hashtag much easier ways to make a living. What happened exactly? I know he got robbed. They took, right, uh, so took his bling. He, he put a video I think, a few months beforehand in that saying, look, you know, you're never going to be able to break in because uh, the, the door's up so high. Uh, you, need to get past, <laughs> you need to get past the security cameras, which wasn't, was, which wasn't working that night, apparently. And you need to get past him. But he wasn't fucking there. And you could just tell he was raging, right? But see that see that thing when it, you know, in his cloakroom? Right? They've, they've taken out the one jacket. One jacket! And they're throwing it just, just nice and nice and neatly on at the fucking floor, which had a hundred and fifty thousand dollar hundred and fifty thousand pound watch in it, if they checked the pockets and that. He's obviously trying to kinda of save face by doing that actually, but that's a pathetic attempt at a comeback. But I remember the same happened to happened to Ricky Hart and he says he was in he was in Spain or he was he was away somewhere for the weekend, so what happens his house gets tanned for to that same weekend, you know? Fucking unbelievable. Simply, it just just it wasn't to be honest. It, was, it would be less than pleasant, by the way, because you didn't want like, some little rat going about your house doing all, all mm. sorts of anything they want and stuff like that. But at the same time, he, f- he literally dared them to come and fucking break into their house. Big time. He That's dared just them. Say, don't, don't probably go with criminals, man. Just leave them alone. You know what I mean? Leave them alone like Tony Bellew. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking dared them. And what happened was he got fucking served. It fucking sucks him when you oh, in the UK. You guys can't even shoot your criminals. Like, here we shoot them if they come in. You guys have to stab them. And then they'll still arrest you. 
I know. I worry about it every day. Yeah, Unless you're Tony Martin. <laughs> That's anyway, all moving on. Hi. What about this one, Andy? What's the context here? Danny Robson put it up. Eddie versus Coogs. They're both sort of photoshopped on these fancy-looking body bodies. One on the PEDs, one on the Clan and the Intel. I think it's is it not something to do with the card that's happening uh, with the YouTuber on it and stuff like that. Obviously, people are all want to get involved oh. now, so it was some sort of mock up in that just to kind of say, look, um, who get these guys fighting Coogan against uh, against Eddie Hearn. I think that's what it was anyway. Mm-hmm. Greg Cross, Mr. Boxing Casual, friend of the pod, shout out to Greg. I haven't heard from Dom McNamara in a while, actually. I hope you're right, Dom, if you're listening. I haven't heard from him in a good few months. Uh, shout out to all the boys. Uh, anyway, uh, Greg Cross, sorry, uh, nomination for Tyson Fury. Alexander Usyk isn't a big fight, even yes. if he beats Joshua. He does nothing for me. He's a nobody, mm, says Greg. Wallin, Schwartz, the last two. Not happy about that one. Here's a good one for you, Gabe. WBA champion or serial killer. We could get Teddy Atlas involved. Gavin Stevens says, love the bloke, but belly of the week nomination. Teddy tweeted out, if one was to find themselves in a position to practice cannibalism, there should be two thoughts. First, find anything else to devour. And second, never, ever chew on a friend. What do you think about that then? A bit of advice from Teddy, Gabe? <laughs> should be handing that advice to the Chinese, man. Atlas said that. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Solid advice. <laughs> That's great. That might win it for Atlas. me. Because I love the Atlas, we had that game. We had that cannibal party going, I can't eat them for you. Do you want to trade places with me? <laughs> we are firemen. I to eat them for you. We are firemen. Put the body on the grill. It cooks better. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you're you gonna, something, Joel. You're going to cry tomorrow because you didn't need a wing. <sighs> <laughs> Go to the body. <laughs> it looks like one of those hot dog eating contests. And I don't want to know what was in those hot dogs, Joe. <laughs> Test that I heart, told you. Test that I told heart. you. It's a, it's a strong week. It's a strong week. We haven't come to the big stuff yet, but it's a strong week. Uh, oh. One thrown in here from David Almond86 for Tommy Fury. On his Instagram, Tommy says, If you know me, you'll probably know I'm not the best cook. You'll probably also know how much I love eating meat, but I'm making an effort to cut down and eat more healthier this year. That's why, says Tommy, I've partnered with frozen plant-based brand Strong Roots UK, who have created a fantastic way to help. The world's first meat patch. It's got scratch and sniff technology to help with the cravings. Now I can have quick and easy meat-free meals packed full of flavour and great ingredients to give me the energy I need for workouts whenever I want. Head to strongroots.com forward slash UK for more a in- patch. info. <laughs> a scratch and sniff meat patch, Andy. Now you thought he wouldn't beat Sullivan Barrera. Now he's got that on his arm. I think anything's possible. Fucking hell, man. Who the fuck eats meat like as if it's nicotine anyway? Like, oh, God, I'm going to have my sausage sandwich first thing in the morning. I'm going to be like a dog. Oh, fuck. Who the fuck goes on like that? I need a patch on my arm to give up meat. What the fuck? Uh, Yeah, after he fucks his missus, it's the two of them that are just like gnawing in a turkey leg instead of a cigarette. (laughs) Molly May, Molly May behind the meat patch. You see, he's all in the meat patch. Fuck it, hell. (laughs) Oh, man, there's some melters this week. Uh, Dominic Ingle as well, the whole lab oh, thing. He's putting oh, up photos no. of him now when he was... Go on, the Andy, you tell him better than me. Oh, no, no. Franny 550 lab- through this thing, go on. <laughs> do it, do it, do it, Andy, do it. No, what, what, was, the, what was the tweet again? It's, I think, I, I'm paraphrasing here, but obviously the, uh, someone got popped in the Ingle gym again. Sonny Edwards and all them were making reference to it. Oh, uh, what's his name? Gabbard. What's his name? The Welsh guy was getting all upset. What the fuck is his name again? Williams. Anyway, Williams. Williams was getting all ready. What, you want to fight? You want to fight Sonny Edwards? What the fuck are you saying? Classic saying, roid rage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go crack it up. And then someone said, I don't think Dom Ingle looks like he knows anything about, P- about uh, performance enhancing drugs, about PEDs. <laughs> and then someone put up a picture of Ingle in the mirror Kind of like, like an Instagram model as a girl in like a tiny pair of underpants. Absolutely ripped to fucking shreds, like ripped to shreds, like he man. But I want to know who the fuck was he taking that picture for? Kebrook. Hi. Well, I'll tell you what. They need to change the lights in that gym now and put black lights in there. Because every fucker will be glowing in the dark. <laughs> let me tell you that. <laughs> it's definitely look at. 
fucking hell, lads. You have to, like, even the most biased people in the world have to say there has to be suspicions around that team at this stage. Like, if three fighters are after popping out of there, come on, like, can't be a, a coincidence. Are they all working um, in, in uh, on their own? They're all on their own doing this. It just happens to be a big coincidence that they're working out of that gym. Come on now. There you go, Bob. Rob putting it in. Trading leather boxing has nominated Sam Jones for making Titanic analogies when talking about the Joe Joyce Daniel Dubois fight. Uh, Trading leather boxing is also nominated. A guy who has got the same tattoo as Dave Allen. He's had war very badly tattooed on his chest. War at Dave Allen. Hashtag. Let's see if I can get this. When one goes to war, we all go. That's that's um, catchy. That. I think that'll catch on. Hashtag Papi Della Knockout. This is Scott Bryant from last July. So he's going and having war tattooed on his belly like his friend Dave Allen. Here we go, Andy. Shimshon has responded. Adrian Broner has tweeted, I'm sorry I haven't been posting on social media, but I'm going through some tough times at this moment. If you can send me $10 on Cash App, uh, a dollar sign, about billions 89, I will appreciate it. Hashtag support me, Andy, and I fight for you. Hashtag always begging. Hashtag about benefits. About begging, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's sad, isn't it? Um, <laughs> no, it's not fucking sad. Um, <sighs> where do you start You're with right, mindset, man? I mean, let's just go back to when he degraded, you know, checkout people working in the supermarket, throwing their throwing his cash about. About the time he's he's in the toilet, ripping up cash and ripping, uh, flushing it down the toilet and stuff. Federal offence, by the way. Um, you know, just throwing it about the place and. It, you know, having to get Big Al to look after his money, game in advance. Remember, there was no, a, a Floyd Mayweather fight where he actually skipped on paying his bar bill and ended up getting arrested for a wee bit, um, and they had to get released. Um, he's got, I don't know how many, I think the last count was seven kids to six or five different women. So they're all going to be needing uh, money, and you know, the baby mamas are going to be you know, used to a certain lifestyle. So that that, that drains probably like in Home Alone, isn't it? You know, when they're all put, putting yeah. their hands on the heads, trying to count them, getting into the freaking van. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. And then obviously he's got that. He's got the, he's got to pay out the the sexual offence case as well. That's costing the best part of a million dollars. So uh, yeah, and the jewelry he owes the, jewelry, the jeweler which... apparently like one point three million dollars yeah. or something ridiculous. Mm. There you go, and, he, and he's and he's flying coach, but he's still comfortable. He's telling the guys and stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah, it's looking good for old AB, by the way. Which, by the way, I did, I did find a, a, a video on YouTube in that way where he actually had his first knockout since 2017. It was some poor fuck on the street. He just walked past and just hit him a crack, and that was him. But yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long time coming, and you know, I, I take no no great delight in being right on this one and stuff like that. <coughs> Bullshit. Um, but uh, again, it's uh, it's just another tragic tale of wasted youth. So as I mean, he's on there. In the club, full of the champagne, getting amongst the hood rats and stuff like that. You know, at least as I mentioned, Floyd would go to the club. There was no drinking site, and Floyd would get out of the club and he'd run home, or he'd, he'd do whatever it was the miles to get back to his house and stuff like that. It's just, it's just an absolute fucking mess. And I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the encore actually as well, because he, he is finished as far as I'm concerned at world level. He is fucking simply a name. Who can bring about a bit of controversy? Who can talk about a shit and do absolutely fucking nothing in the ring to deserve that fucking money? And AB, enjoy it for as long as it lasts, pal. Because I'm telling you right now, I've said it before. I'm not going to say it again, but I'm telling you, about another ten years, I, I hate to see where you're going to be, guy. I hate to see where you're going to be because you kind of keep going out in the club with stacks of cash and embarrassing your, your wife. Be fucking going about the you know, just just the way you're acting, man. You know, so just someone needs to fucking get, get a grip of him because all these kiss ass crew are like, oh, you know, yeah, AB, that's, that's the way to do it, baby. Give me the cash bag, baby. Come on. Get a grip because you're going to end up fucking waking up when you're fucking 30 or 40, uh, 40 or 40, 40 or 50, sorry, and you're going to be absolutely nothing left. And all your bitches will be away, and your baby mamas will be taking you to court and suing your ass because you've not paid the fucking alimony. And your kids are going to grow up hating you as well if you didn't get your shit together. Go on, Rob. I was just going to say, Andy, the Prophet Patterson, he's finally ended up sucked out, fucked out, looking for a handout. And AB, like, <laughs> sad, sad to see, sad to see, like, he's actually looking for a handout. Like, this is, this is beyond tragic. Like, when you think about it, the guy was 
a serious talent at one thirty. A serious talent. Like I mean, like he um one thirty one thirty five, he, he should have been dominant. Yeah, yeah. And like he, he knocked out I know I know I know Ponce Leon kinda of beat him, but like um fucking flatten Antonio DeMarco, a few of them, like um like he was he was onto something, like he was onto something. I think he made a move. Actually, he probably should have gone to forty instead of going straight to forty-seven. Um, but he was chasing the money or whatever, like, and it's beyond tragic. Like he's a, he's a deplorable character, by the way. He's not he's not a, he's not a human you can root for, like. But at the same time, a guy to make that kind of money and it just goes to show there's no ju- no justice, like, in life. Sometimes when you look at, at the money he's made and lost, and then you see a consummate professional like. Kobe Bryant dying in a fucking tragedy like that, you know what I mean? That guy that did everything in his sport and lived the lived the life the right way, like. And then you see this fella getting an opportunity, like, and just blown it time after time, time after time, and opportunity after opportunity on Showtime. Espinosa can't get enough of him because he puts asses in seats, but he don't put his own ass in the gym. And now he's uh, he's reaping what he sold there. Unfortunately, it's sad, like in a lot of ways, but true. Yep, definitely yeah. wasted talent. I take an L. I picked him to be the next Floyd, but I did think he lost to Ponce de Leon as well, but he could have been so much more. But he's made a lot of money, but then I suppose he's he wasted a lot as well. Where do you go after that? A few more Belly of the Week nominations. Joe Kennedy, uh, Golden Boy, said, in a matchup between Oscar de la Hoya versus, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, King Ryan Garcia, who do you think would win? Oscar says a draw. Uh, Joe Kennedy says this is up, up there with the old Morales versus Stevenson. Do you remember Morales against Shakur Stevenson when Top Rank were pitching that a while ago? Who would have won in a fantasy matchup? Come on. Ryan Garcia against Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar must be on the coke if he thinks Garcia would have beaten him. Absolutely no chance. Trading leather boxing nominated Conor Ben for having a beard transplant, and he still seems unable to grow any facial hair. British Hair Clinic not doing their job, clearly. Andy as well, you've nominated this lady, Nicole Sapstead from UK Anti Doping. Um, talking about Liam Cameron. We spoke about this before. It's a ridiculous situation. Liam Cameron getting very harshly treated, especially compared mm. to Dillian White. It might look strange, but it's wrong and illogical to compare apples and pears, says Miss Sapstead, talking about trace samples, steroids, etc. I think we can all agree, Andy, just finally, uh, Cameron got badly treated and Sapstead doesn't know what she's on about. Yeah, well, we mentioned that last week as well. And I've I, I seen somebody mention during the weekend that apparently UCAD... We're in Africa this week, where Mo Farah was, and um, I need to go and pull up the actual tweet again, actually, but there was, like, if you bear with me a second, see if I can find it uh, very quickly, um, but it was, um, so there was a guy called Derek Ray uh, this morning, there was a last session down at Tambak, thanks to British Athletics for the support, great to see Mo Farah smashing out some easy 200s, and I joined him for a few laps and stuff, so um, there was a... Uh, Apparently something was cropped up. There was a documentary about a named un, an unnamed British athlete using EPO in Kenya it was released in 2016. I wonder if you can tell us uh, did the UK had ever contact you to ask the name of a redacted British athlete who used EPO? And the gentleman who was asked that question come back and says UK had never asked for a name. And that person who was meant to be Mo Farah. So really, I think I think over the course of the last 18 months, what we've seen with no telling. Oscar Rivas' team about the situation and then what's happened with Liam Cameron uh, as well, get the four year ban an easy target um, for UCAD um, if you've not got the back end, if you've not got the money or the or the pill for lawyers and stuff you're shit out of luck and uh, it just doesn't work they're, they're, they've, been, they've been proven new UCAD to be just not fit for purpose really And uh, uh, okay, there's no the drug testing out there isn't a great to a point whereas it's going to catch everybody for every type of drug and that but I still maintain VAD is still the gold standard and stuff but they they can't take sanctions or actions against fighters and ban them and stuff like that so it's really defeating the purpose really isn't it Mo Farah running away from the testers hopefully Saul Farah won't get caught anytime soon Ozzy have you got any nominations for Bellew of the Week strong line up this week already uh, no no none from me Nothing from Aussie. Gabe, what about you? Dominic Ingall's been nominated. Tony Bellew for the PhDs. AB, of course, and the guy who had the Dave Allen tattoo. Strong lineup, as I suggested. Am I picking the winner? Nope. Nominations first, please. Oh, no, 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 no noms for me. Nothing from him, Rob. You've always got one for us. Go on. Oh, yeah, you betcha. Um, Eddie this week. Had a kind of a round table show now, and he was telling Coogan about it on an IFL. 
Coburn was raging. He wasn't on it, like wasn't he? He was raging, and uh, he said, "Oh, you know, I have the panel. It's uh, Joe Weller. I don't know who the fuck Joe Weller is. Does anyone know who Joe Weller is? Some kind of celebrity, isn't he? I don't know if he's on one of them shows. Um, Joe Weller, uh, Wiley, the 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 Godfather of grime, the creator of grime music. Who I have a lot of respect for as a musician, but he doesn't know shit about boxing. He's a fucking matchroom FC cheerleader." Um, and the next one was going to be Tony Bellew but he couldn't make it because of the birth of his son and I bet he was raging that that son was born that day wasn't he because he was dying to be on that round table just leave him alone leave him alone and get on with the birth of his son so Coogan didn't get in anyway in the in the in the call up uh, fucking the, he said he was going to replace him with somebody who really knows all about the sport so he got Lawrence O'Coley um, to make up the lineup, <laughs> so just leave Bellew alone, will you? Don't be trying to fucking put him on telly when his son is being born. He just wants to be left alone, and, and let him look out for fellas that are injected BHDs and get on with it. <laughs> just leave him alone. Hey, to Dave Lowe, back any nominations from you? Just an add-on to AB. Um, I gotta throw in anybody who actually went to that Venmo or Cash App or whatever and donated to him. Uh, they have to be even lower, you know. Although, you know... <laughs> Forward slash people. Patreon box in asylum. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait a wee bit longer till he's in the gutter begging for it and I'm going to give him $5 or something like that. that. I'm going to spend it all at once, AB. I mean, I was, I, when I first saw the post, I, I felt a little sad and felt a little bit bad for the bastard as well. But Andy quickly cured me of that. Um, especially <laughs> t- today, he reminded me of like, absolute just like completely senseless douche things he does like making fun of uh, people working like ten dollar an hour jobs uh like just trying to ride people down for walking up to him asking for a picture that sort of thing just being a complete dick for no reason at all um i think one of his recent controversies was also he he said he was going to use his gap to shoot anyone who approached him um asking for gay sex um also he of course was caught dming uh, underage cash me on yeah. girl. Um, yep. Well, I, I mean, at this shut point, that soft I ass shit up. His his current life partner or whoever's with him uh, on a long term basis is probably used to that sort of thing. But yeah, it, it, Andy's prediction sucked out, fucked out, looking for a handout. I mean, it's it's coming true faster than I thought. Yeah. Jesus, wish you I could see him ending up like. Do you remember you wee man out of that film Menace to Society? You know, I suck your dick, man. You could see him ending up like him, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ten dollars, baby. <laughs> you know the reference, Rob. <laughs> Feel sorry for your mama. <laughs> That's oh, right. That yeah. <laughs> some of these fighters who, some of these fighters who fall on hard times, like their careers are respected and they're respected and. You know, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, you know, he had to, he had to sell the, the famous pink Cadillac or whatever. He had to sell Rays. He had to sell that whole block that he owned. But Frank Sinatra, you know, like, loved him so much. He supported him for his for his later life. Uh, Muhammad Ali, he had money troubles, too, but he was so loved uh, that he, he didn't really have to, like, he could just make an appearance and not have to worry about it. A.B., I mean, no one's going to be asking for his him to show up and make, and make like, your commencement speech or something. He, this, this dude... Not Tyson concerned. probably the biggest example of that back from the brink on the basis of fans like getting behind him Tyson but fucking AB is asked out now I've got a couple Steve yep go ahead Andy uh, Chuck Wu for Milton in the chat there by the way it's just oh I feel sorry for Chuck Wu tonight Andy leave him alone I feel sorry for him yeah okay Tony Bell you <laughs> uh, I Iceman, Iceman John Scully tweeted that he's just, he just got off the phone to Michael Nunn uh, and he, who made the report Ooh. that he's having a kickboxing fight in April. So he's, just, he's, he's at the jail like less than six months he's going to be fighting again. But he must be mid-50s now, eh? Oh, he's got to be. Oh, no, please, no. I was a massive Nunn fan. I don't want to see this. Uh, he's going kickboxing, according to John Scully. He's safe. Um, did anybody catch Shane McGuigan's Steve stops? having none of that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm going to put a stop <laughs> to McGu- this shit right now. Shane McGuigan uh, being a bit salty uh, when Samson Boxing tweeted out that they had won the the first bid by I think it was just I think it was like 
twenty thousand dollars extra than what Tom Brink had uh, had, had posted, and uh, Shane McQuicken tweets out, "Good on you, Samson Boxing, my friend." <laughs> but the fucking problem is because it's a fucking mandatory and it goes to purse bids. Guess what? Josh gets the fucking the big the bigger split of the purse, so he's not going to pay you half either. By the way, so <laughs> I don't really I don't really thought that one out actually. To be honest with you, um, I was going to put up Fury as well, but obviously he, he did that uh, with regards to the music mm. fight. But I want to throw in Joe Parker and Dylan White for kind of similar views and the same excuses and that as well. Um, Parker saying he's the A side. I think he said. And uh, White's basically kind of saying that, you know, along the same lines as Tyson and that, he's, he's, he does, nobody knows who he is and he can't sell on pay-per-view. And, <laughs> did, did Dylan White see his last fight? You think he deserved to be on pay-per-view after that shit? So, yeah, I'll probably put up White, Fury and Parker as well for that one as well, mate. Someone's just put in a late nomination here. I'm just getting part of it. Apparently, Steo Ryan 81 is saying that Josecito Lopez is a better fighter than Sean Porter. So, Steo Ryan 81 has been thrown in late as well. Everybody's thrown theirs in. So, as I said before, there's a strong lineup this week. Dominic Ingle, I really like the Tony Bell UPHD one. Dave Allen's tattoo, Eubank Jr. getting robbed. Those two fat mess heavyweights as well. But it's got to be only one for me this week, Aussie. I'm going for Adrian Broner. What about yourself? I agree, Adrian Broner. That's two for AB. Maybe throw him $10 on the old cash app, Gabe. Any money coming from you? Any love for AB? Who are you going for? <clears throat> Not a fucking cent. Uh, I might, however, send Teddy Atlas some good sharp knives. <laughs> uh, that's, God damn, this is such a tough week. I really, I really want to give it to Atlas, but I do I just can't. I gotta go with Broner on this one. Fuck. Broner. Forgot. Yep. Forgot all about Teddy Atlas. There's three nominations for Broner. It's becoming pretty academic. Rob, you could swing it the other way. Who are you going for? Yeah, kind of. I like the value one as well. Like, but yeah, it's gotta be AB. Shut that soft that shit up. Looking for fucking cash donations. What do you think we are? We're trying to get money for Patreon, baby. This is not easy. It's a dog eat dog world out there, AB. We're sorry about that, baby, bro. But you're gonna have to shut that soft that shit up. For you, sucked out, fucked out, looking for a handout. <laughs> like I said, Rob, we might we might be donating a Bell of the Week award to AB this week. Could be the best thing he's won in a while. Hey, to Dave Loback, who are you nominating? It's going to be AB about Bell Certainly isn't about Bell Use sweep. anymore. He could, be su- could be sweeping up Andy, IBO, WBA, WBO, WBC, IBF, <laughs> and WBU. Go on, <laughs> six out of six for AB, I take it. It goes to the one and only about bankruptcy. All about bollocks. The one and only Adrian. AB level fighter. Adrian Broner. Oh my god. Yeah, he's, he's got one out of the park in that. He just needs to get his ass back in the ring. You know, fight. He needs to get his head straightened out. He, well, he does. What, what do you used to call him? You used to call him AIDS ridden. No uh, problem a- cloner. Yeah. Yeah, that was the night after Chino beat well, well, he's called him Adrian Bonner after he did the little one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Freudian slip, though. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I can't take I, t- I can't take credit for that one. I don't I don't well, know if anybody caught, but I, like... I actually I actually tweeted it at my Mount Rushmore during the weekend there actually, and uh, it was some of, some of the salty tweets I got was actually quite I was actually quite surprised. I thought folk would be over going, yeah, get in there, but there was a few salty people and. Um, Took offence to it, actually. I was quite surprised. I actually got one that I forgot to read out last night, but, uh, last week. Sorry, but I think it's worth reading out now, even though Brown has already won. Uh, John Heaton threw it in. Belly of the Week nomination for Bunsey. Uh, shouldn't laugh at depression, but he could have used a better description when he was talking about Kel Brook's reputation. From this week's Costello and Bunce podcast, Bunsey said, Kel's been in some black hellish holes. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> oh dear! And they fought fans. Hopefully, he can dig his way out. <laughs> Chuck one. I'll take my own on this chat, man. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> Go and drink some cranberry juice. Fell asleep. <laughs> Are you on your period? Oh, terrible. I got a bit of the man tits me. <laughs> <laughs> I fell asleep. 
Go on, Ozzy, do you want to add anything in before we close up for the evening? No, 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 nothing. Well, let's finish up, boys. Good old Jason Chukwu, congratulations to Adrian Broner. You are the the uh, Bellu of the week for episode 357. Thank you to everybody who's been on tonight. We've had a good laugh. Andy Patterson's been with us as always. Wrapping up Kelly, Dave the Hater, Lowback, Gabe on fine form, Ozzy Smith as well as usual. We'll catch you all again the same time, same place next week. I've been Steve Wellings. Bye. Hey.